Hello, welcome back everyone, or welcome if this is your first time to the channel. We are here for the weekly psychic forecast for week commencing Monday the 30th of January 2023. Here we are. And I can tell you straight away there's some very big shifts this week because I could not stop yawning when I went to record this video. I could feel the energy shifting and it was yawn, 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 yawn. So what we will do is begin with an overview of the week. Then we will go day, day by day, looking at each day in turn, the tendencies and energies there. Then we will finish up with a spiritual guidance message for the week. There will be timestamps in the description below, of course, so you can jump in and out, uh, pop back in during the week as you need to. So without further ado, let's take a look at the overview of this week. We have number two, intuition. Number 40, mouse spirit, tend to the small things. And the seven of earth. Okay. So I was talking about energy shifting and I'm really feeling that. I just had to pause the video again and yawn again, <laughs> which it just came out of nowhere. I just had like a yawning fit. Um, but it's OK because it's telling me that there's a, a, a big energy shift that's happening this week. And it feels looking at these cards, it feels like there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. We may sense them, but we won't necessarily see what's going on. I think we will get some hints as to what is to come. Uh, later on this year, particularly from March onwards. But I don't think we'll necessarily see the big changes this week. But I can assure you um, there is going to be a lot going on. So you might feel a little bit tired this week. You might feel exhausted. Um, the message is certainly just to go about your daily business, just to keep doing what it is that you need to do. You know, get up in the morning, get dressed, have a wash, <laughs> you know, eat, <laughs> feed your family, um, go to work, go about your daily routines. Because it feels like the things that we want to manifest, we've already put into motion and now it's the waiting resting period so resting literally for some people I think there will be a need to actually rest to take a break to take some time out um to actually I want to say rest on your laurels I think he said rest on your cockles then it's warm your cockles I don't know where that came from that that expression just coming in quite an old-fashioned expression um that may be relevant to somebody watching of course but um yeah and and just know that everything is happening for you this week know that the universe is working for you all of the things that you are aligning yourself with they're on their way uh so it feels like a very very powerful and positive week um when it comes to the law of attraction, but I don't feel like there's anything you need to do. I feel you've already done it. Whatever it is you've already asked for is just sort of pottering along now behind the scenes. It's just quietly just creating itself in the ether right now. So I want to say don't worry. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the law of attraction, you can, of course, buy my book, Dream Bigger, How the Law of Attraction Really Works. And I will, of course, put that in the description below. As always, that's always there for you if that's of interest. So it does feel like there is something of a sense of anticipation for the future it's like we're, we're already feeling it we're already sensing what's coming in the future we're, we're sensing what's coming further on down the line um but it there's really nothing to do there, there could be some worry that comes through this week as well there, there could be some concern um maybe worries for the future coming up but it's all based in fear that sort of thing so I want to say put it to one side um because spirit are working on our side now remember the the dark controllers who've had control of this planet for so long are losing their grip losing their power so things will start to go in the favor of humankind of mankind now um and you know what is in the benefit of mankind is in the benefit of the whole planet too. It's not us versus the planet. We belong here too. Um, we are part of this ecosystem. We are, are part of this world. Um, it will look after us as we look after it. You know, it's it's not a case of, oh, well, mankind should be corralled into these horrible little 15 minute cities where they can't escape from or live in some terrible wall that looks like a prison, which was unveiled recently um, in the Middle East somewhere. Which the, the plan looks absolutely disgusting. It looks like a prison. Um, that's my opinion. Um, and, um, you know, but oh no, human, humanity is like a scourge on this planet. They need to be corralled into these tiny little camps, you know, like concentration camps, basically, um, you know, and, and, and kept in, in, a, in, in one place away from the rest of the world. That's utter nonsense, utter nonsense. That would not help the planet at all. It would not help us. Um, we think it would, or some people think it would, because we've been taught terrible things about humanity. We've been taught so many lies about who we are and what we are. Very, very misguided Um misguided people but also people with an agenda who want to you know return us to a, a state of neo-feudalism uh, which we must not stand up 
which we must not stand for. I want to say which we must not stand for. Um, but I want you to know it's okay. You know, the future that we have been manifesting for us, for humanity, for good, it is coming, for integration, for healing, it's on its way. The things that you have asked for in your life previously, um, you know, in the month of January, in the month of December before, it's coming now. I want to say the manifesting you've been doing the past couple of months specifically since um, the full moon before December, whenever that date was, that's the one that comes to mind. Um, you can look up when that was, the last full moon before December. From that point onwards, I feel that's when the the things we've been asking for, things we've been manifesting, they're in action now. They're actually coming to pass. They're already coming to pass. We have nothing to worry about. So it's OK for us to do things that we might consider small or less important right now, because the small things are incredibly important. They are what keep us moving forwards towards our bigger dreams, after all. So um, it's going to be an interesting week. There could be some worry. There could be some anxieties coming up, some old fears, um, particularly fear about the future, I want to say. But they are unfounded. All right. Everything is going in the right direction now. It absolutely is. We are in another seven year as well. I just want to draw your attention to that because we have the number seven card here. We are in another seven year. Very, very spiritual energy that we're going into. So if you do find yourself worrying or, or stressing, see if you can lean into a spiritual practice to actually help you with that, like yoga or meditation something like that tai chi something that relaxes you but also balances you um on a holistic level so balances the whole you okay let's see what else we have remember who you are <laughs> i am on 11 2 oh that's sweet 11 11 which reduces to two sitting on number two card i like that cheeky abundance is for everyone yes it is this is what i was saying abundance is for everyone not just the few not just the lucky few or or not just um you know when, when we are abundant we don't take anything away from other people and there is this powerful lesson at the moment as well and kundalini rising yes i love that that's sitting on the, the anxiety card <laughs> um or the card that, that specifically relates to anxiety which may be coming up kundalini rising yes um i think that's why for many of us it feels like we're having a bit of a break this week because spiritually we're going up a level things are happening and when we do have these um awakening we have different layers and levels of awakening or what you might call a kundalini rising um when we go through that it can make you feel crazy it, it can it can make you feel very off kilter very off balance it can also be very wonderful it can be quite an extreme experience because it is um it, it is us um and as a human being actually rising up to to a higher energetic level than that which we are used to and it can be very disconcerting to deal with brings can bring up like difficult issues from the past to deal with so be gentle with yourself be kind to yourself remember there is enough abundance in the universe for everyone there is more than enough abundance in the universe for everyone um we only experience lack because we expect to experience it or because from other people have been trying to impose it upon us and then we, we normalise it in our minds. Um, lack is absolutely not necessary. Look at your own reflection, 41. Interesting. So it could be a week to do a little bit of self-reflection, maybe to do a bit of um, work on yourself, maybe have a counselling session, you know, if you have if you work with somebody. Um or just to do some self-reflection, self-contemplation, look at yourself, look at your life, but do it through the eyes of love, do it through the eyes of kindness, see yourself as the angels see you, um, you know, not as some critical parent might see you, <laughs> see yourself in a loving, kind manner, because um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot going on behind the scenes, and the universe listens to every word that we say, hears every word that we say, um, and we can prevent things from manifesting if we go in a different direction, we can slow it down. Okay, so just to remember that, try and stay in a good place this week, stay in a calm place as much as possible. Um, make yourself as comfortable and as happy as possible this week. Okay, let's have a look at love and romance for this week and with the little pink cards. Oh, we have rainbows and unicorns, unrealistic expectations, we have long distance relationship. Okay, possibly maybe sweets, chocolates and roses. <laughs> Okay, I really feel like this is not a good week to get into a new relationship. Um, the energy just, uh, it, it's still bubbling away beneath the surface. It's like try to eat a cake before it's finished baking. It's not very nice. <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> it's not done yet. It's not ready yet. Um, yeah, I, I would say it's not the best week to start a, a relationship. Um, it's almost like there would be a distance between you, like you can't quite see each other at the moment 
and you may work out in due course that you're actually traveling in different directions if you start something this week so that's just something to bear in mind of course this is a group reading so that won't necessarily relate exactly to everybody so take what resonates for you and leave what doesn't um i always say that on on cosmic dragon on my readings over there if you haven't followed that channel already please do i'll put a link above so you can have a look and check that out and I think as well, because we kind of are in this um, in this energy of uncertainty at the moment of not quite knowing what's going on, but knowing that something is coming on. I think um, it might be a little bit premature to get into a relationship. We might pick the wrong person or we might move a little bit too quickly um, with a certain amount of naivety. So I do want to caution against that. And, and we may pick somebody who just really isn't suitable. If 15 six, again, look at that. They're playing with the numerology because 15 reduces to six. So with the romance cards at the bottom, we've got 15, 6. So that's devil energy coming up. So there could be some temptation, not devil as in freak out, devil as in the tarot card. Devil, let's, let's chill out. Um, <laughs> 15, 6 um, comes with choices, of course, but it may be the wrong choice. It may be a choice that you know is not good for you. And you're thinking, oh, well, maybe it'll be OK. Maybe it'll be OK this time. Maybe not. OK, if this person has already shown you that they are not the right person for you, what's changed exactly, you know? probably nothing so um be realistic about who the person is if you're looking at a new partner this week if you're looking at taking the next step in a relationship this week because there could be an emotional distance um as well i want to talk about emotional distance you may not you know maybe just you go on a date and you just have nothing in common <laughs> like you just can't find any common ground um or maybe you you pick someone that you know just isn't the right person for you and you kind of get back on that merry-go-round again and you, you really don't need that kind of hassle um also there could be some coldness some distance in existing relationships so it's just something to bear in mind just try to be kind to each other you know if you need some distance right now if you need some space take it um this is a good week for that because it is more about self-reflection than spending time together and doing things together so that could actually be um quite a sensible decision so let's take a look at money and finance for this week so what's going on there with our money oracle cards here let's see what we've got we have empty pockets are you feeling a bit low on cash well it's the end of january so you might be <laughs> i mean you might have been paid already it's the 30th you might be waiting to get paid um make your money work harder okay you are already abundant. Yes, and, and I like how that's come out on, on the card that says abundance is for everyone. You're already abundant and abundance is for everyone. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Just remember that. I, I want you to remember that, um, you know, regardless of how your life looks at the moment, you are already abundant. That is your true nature. Anything else that you're experiencing right now is just something that we're acting out in the 3D. Um, it's just an experience we're having in the, the third dimension in the 3D, which is where we live at the moment. Empty pockets. Yes, people may be a bit short on cash this 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 week not really surprising um you know even if you have been paid at the end of, of january you still might find yourself a little bit short and and the wisdom here is to make sure that you're making your money go as far as possible so no frivolous purchases uh, that's not advised this month i mean it's your life at the end of the day it's your money you can do what you want i'm, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life of course as i always say not financial advice <laughs> this is uh, just looking at the energy Maneki Neko. Oh, I knew I brought him in for a reason. There he is. <laughs> I had a reason Maneki Neko wanted to come in this week. Let's pop him there. And sensible investments. Yeah. So there is a, a good possibility here for the future, I want to say, with money. Um, sensible investments made this week could, um, could, yield, um, could yield for the future. So it could be business investments, investing in yourself, investing in your business. It's not necessarily money. It could be investing in your health. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit dizzy as I'm actually saying that. So something's coming into my third eye. I can feel that chakra kind of vibrating, expanding quite, quite powerfully there. Um, yeah, there, there could be something powerful happening in the markets or about to happen if you get in now. Um, again, this is not financial advice. It's just what I'm sensing. Um, of course, you know, you do your own research. You look into that for yourself. But sensible investments made this this week in particular could actually yield results. Or it might be, I don't know, for some of you buy a lottery ticket or something and, and you um, come into a load of money that way. Whatever. Um going to be different for everybody, but it's an interesting week. And with Monique and Echo, particularly, I want to talk about business. 
I do want to talk about business. I feel this is a good week for business. I feel we could achieve a lot in our business. Um, if you run a business, I say our business because I run a business too. Um, you know, you can achieve a lot in business this week. I think it's quite a fortunate week um, when it comes to money and finance. There, there are some real possibilities there. But if you are a bit short on, on cash, be sensible with it. Sensible investments are what are the, the name of the game this week, not crazy ones, not, you know, taking a chance and um, you know, putting a load of money into something. If you're not sure if it's going to 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 come through for you, that may not be the week to do that. It may not be the the week to take risks. Of course, you know, if you do, if you um, if you buy stocks and shares, you know, if you do that sort of thing, or if you buy crypto, if you're a speculator, you know, it's completely up to you. But it doesn't feel like the the kind of week that, that's particularly good for uh, risky specul speculation or risky investments, shall we say? So. Let's move on to the days of the week now, and we will start with Monday. OK, so let's take a look at the days of the week. Um, Monday, the 30th of January. Here are our cards. We have number nine, Fulfillment of Wishes. Well, that's nice to see. Number 50, Rhino Spirit, Overcome Any Obstacle. And the Four of Fire. Wow. That's really, really nice energy. Um, you might feel like you want to stay at home actually on Monday. <laughs> um, I'm actually filming this on Monday. So, you know, um, that's how the energy is going at the moment. It's coming in on a Monday rather than before the week commences for some reason. But um, that's just how it's going at the moment. Interesting. Mm. Um, now, there is this theme of, of the things that we want coming to pass here. So I think we may get a glimpse of it on Monday. We may get a reminder of how to stay in the right energy, stay in the right vibration to actually manifest the things that we want or to manifest them faster or to reach them faster, reach them more efficiently, um, to overcome the obstacles, overcome the problems, the negativity that might be holding us back. Um, there is this sense of contentment here. It's lovely. Maybe we'll be finding peace again on Monday. Maybe you'll be... Um, finding a spiritual practice or listening to a spiritual teacher or something that, that gets you back in that vibration, gets you back in that gentle, relaxed, peaceful vibration, joyful vibration that will take you towards where you want to go, take you towards your desires. Maybe you fell out of it for a while. Maybe you've been hanging around with people who are very negative, who are very difficult to be around. You know, maybe other people's negativity have been dragging your energy down. And that's a very difficult situation to live in when, when you are around people like that. Maybe it's, you know, people at home. Maybe it's people you work with, um, people you live with people you have to encounter on a daily basis, you know, you might have customers who are very difficult, who drag your energy down. That can be very, very challenging. So it, it, there is a suggestion here. Um, perhaps it will be time soon to make some choices, um, to make some choices about who is allowed in your life and who is allowed in your energy so that you can remain in that sort of cocoon I want to say cocoon your energy um to keep out the negative Nellies to keep out the people who complain and drag you down all the time because they are not the ones who will lift you up all right let me say that they are you might think well I'm sure this person's going to help me because they said they would but energetically they can't energetically they cannot lift you higher than the level that they are at all right you have to do that work for yourself you have to do that heavy lifting for yourself you know you have to embody the rhino spirit energy and you have to push through that energetic barrier to reach higher levels of um vibration so that you can manifest greater things in your life and greater things doesn't necessarily mean more money okay it can manifest in that way but this is about joy now this is about focusing on the things that we actually want in our life um so monday you may find yourself actually considering um your life as it is right now have you forgotten your dreams have you forgotten your goals have you put them on the back burner to do something else and then completely forgot about them um, you know, are they sitting on the back burner burning at the moment? Have they burnt to a crisp? <laughs> Do you need to take the lid off the, the saucepan and take a look in there and see what's left and go, oh, I remember that. Yeah, I'll just fish that out of there. Um, it does feel like things coming back to us, ideas, dreams coming back to us this week, reminding us of who we are as well. There's a little reminder here of who we truly are and what we deserve in this lifetime and what we can truly have. Um, you know, and, and it is about joy and contentment because that is our true nature ultimately that is the true human nature that is what we want that is what we deserve um it's what we already are and i think there are going to be reminders coming up for everyone in in different ways you know in different shapes and forms um but a reminder to get us back on track energetically to move in the right direction now it, it's almost like the past couple of years are over now we're done 
Okay, we're, we're done with all of that stuff to do with lockdowns, to do with alleged viruses and all that stuff. You know, we're done with that. That's done. It's over now. We're getting back on track energetically. And I think this is what's happening this week. It's quite a powerful turning point, quite some, some powerful shift. So that's where I was getting the tiredness from, I think, at the beginning. This is a shift where we're getting back on track now. We've done that side quest. <laughs> now we're back, back in the game, back on, on the horse, shall we say. So let's see what else else we've got here what are the messages oops things we, well, that's ridiculous i can't have all of those i'm going to take that bottom one though. what you resist healing in yourself persists well that's all about manifesting yes because they say what you resist persists and you can see that in the purple letters on this card what you resist persists but i added in what you resist healing in yourself persists because that is the truth um what healing do you need to do on yourself? Is it time to get back on your healing path? If you're already on it or if you've stepped on it, off it, you know, if you've done Reiki, done like Reiki training or something like that or some sort of holistic training and you've kind of let it slip, let it slide, let it fall to the wayside, not really done much with it. Is it time to get back on that horse again? Is it time to incorporate, reincorporate that into your life right now? Um, it does feel like well-being needs to come to the fore. So what else? I give thanks for my many blessings. Yes, gratitude. Absolutely some people will intentionally misunderstand you yeah it's time to weed out the snakes it is absolutely time to weed out the snakes in your um in your environment um i was gonna say in your environs i don't know if that's an english word in your environs um in your environment in the people around you in your in your circle um weed out the people who don't belong there the ones who snipe at you who drag you down and then go oh yeah but i'm your friend i'm only saying that because i care about you and then they absolutely destroy you the next day you know it's that's not okay all right people can say they're your friend but they are not they can even act like it sometimes but if they're not acting like it all the time and if they're dragging you down most of the time making you feel exhausted make you feel tired and you find you're actually avoiding them guess what they're not your friend they may even be an enemy all right a frenemy you be very very careful of frenemies i think they're going to be showing themselves up this week so um I feel like Mercury might be doing something interesting this week. I know we've come out of Mercury retrograde. I think it's, are we out of the shadow now? Maybe the astrologers can weigh in in the comments for me there. I feel like maybe we're getting out of the shadow because Mercury seems to be coming up. We seem to be very, um, very our perception seems to be very, very much improved, I think, this week when it comes to, to, to friendships and relationships um, of, of that sort. We're going to be weeding out the people who aren't right for us on Monday. Um, achievements come in all shapes and sizes. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. And taking full responsibility for your life brings freedom. Yes, it does. Interesting. These are kind of all about manifesting. Um, <laughs> these four in particular are very very connected to manifesting working with the law of attraction which you may be doing intentionally or not um but yes time for a gratitude practice when was the last time you prayed when was the last time you gave thanks for a meal for anything <laughs> you know for waking up in the morning when was the last time you sent love and blessings to somebody um sent healing to to somebody or to yourself um yeah, it, it's interesting because there is this nudge, certainly this week, I think, about taking full responsibility for your life. It, it, it's another nudge towards humans, human sovereignty, self-sovereignty. Um, feels like an important one. And some people are going to resist it and other people are going to try and prevent you from doing it. So I just want you to bear that in mind. Um, not everyone on your path is your friend. Not everyone on your path is there to help and assist you. Some are literally challenges for you to get beyond. So be aware of that. But also, um, what I was saying about this week in the overview, um, about how we just want to go about our daily business this week, you know, we don't need to be doing anything big. And remember that achievements come in all shapes and sizes, you know, sometimes an achievement is when you're going through a, a, a like, um, a difficult time, maybe you're going through a spiritual awakening, sometimes an achievement is getting out of bed and having a shower, all right, that's okay. It's okay to count that as an achievement if that's where you are at the moment. Not if you're just being lazy, <laughs> but, um, you know, that's not okay. But if you're struggling, that's okay. You know, cheer yourself on at every step, okay? Particularly on Monday, cheer yourself on at every step. You are doing great work and remember to give thanks. We'll keep giving thanks. We'll keep healing ourselves, um, sending that love, healing and, and gratitude to the universe and to others, to God, to ourselves. Um, and that's going to keep us moving towards greater levels of freedom. 
Oh, it's really beautiful energy. So let's take a look at love and romance. This is also for friendships. Um, this is intended, I originally wrote it intending it as a romance oracle, but it does of course apply to all relationships, including platonic and, and friendship ones too. Okay. So Monday's relationships, we have your wish is my command. Well, that's a manifesting card if ever I saw it. <laughs> 24 6 master builder sharing the load 42 oh interesting the numerology is just off the charts this week <laughs> it's being really cheeky um 24 and 42 are mirroring numbers okay they are a mirror of each other they are of the reflection of each other so there's absolutely um i talked about self-reflection and self-reflection in relationships um self-reflection could be coming up a lot and you could be reflecting on a romantic relationship if you're not sure if it's suitable if you're not sure if it's something that you still want to continue moving forwards with um your wish is my command i want to say with the person in your life at the moment if there is somebody um are they going to help you to move forwards towards your dreams? Are they being supportive to you? Are you being supportive to them? Are you the negative one in the relationship? Are you the one that needs to, to kind of buck up a little bit? Um, so there are these questions being asked about whether your relationship is bringing freedom to both of you and the, the possibility to grow, improve um, or not. And that could be something that you need to consider. If you're not in a relationship, then it could be about finding someone that enables you to do that. You you know, that you could be hung up on someone who's never going to help you to forwards um so it may be time to be a little bit realistic and think well actually you know what no I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore I'm going to find somebody who does do this for me I'm going to write out a, a list of requirements that I want for my next relationship somebody who will be supportive will be on the same page as me working towards the the same kinds of goals as me so let's see what else we have here oh we've got another three emotional disconnect yeah commitment dot 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 and self-sovereignty yes yeah, self-sovereignty coming through is a very powerful theme this week very very powerful theme so there could be some miscommunications um i talked about emo emotional disconnects in um relationships as far, as far as if you get together with a new person this week and, and that seems to be the case for monday really bad day for a first date <laughs> i'm just gonna say it this is a really bad day for a first date okay um you may not be able to connect with that person. You may be feeling a little bit disconnected, sort of almost pulled back into yourself, almost kind of like in a dreamy state on Monday, I want to say. Um, so it may not be the, the the kind of day to be considering that or looking on uh, whatever dating app you're on. You know, it, it might really not be the moment for that because you may not be able to sense correctly who is right for you on Monday. Self-sovereignty, absolutely. You don't need to be in a relationship. It's okay, and, and you do need to be your whole self before you enter one. So, is there some healing that needs to happen here first? And commitment, dot dot dot. So, I left the dot 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 here because what is commitment to you? How how is this an issue for you? Is it a problem for you? Is it a problem that you keep getting together with people who do not want commitment, who are not uh, committing to the same level as you? Are you with somebody who's not committing to the same level as you? Is it time for you to move to a new level of commitment? All these questions being asked today on Monday, if you're already in a relationship or if you're not, is it what what is it exactly that you want to commit to having in a relationship? Um, and it feels like the blueprint for the future is kind of blank for you here with this number 30. It feels like the blueprint for your future relationships is, it's like a, a, a blank document, like you could write it out today. And I do suggest doing that, whether you're in a relationship or not, I suggest doing that for Monday. Um, write out your list of requirements of what you would actually like in a relationship, what you would like to, to be able to have, to achieve, to, you know, the sort of person that you would like to be with, because I think that would be very helpful just to really keep steering that energy towards achieving your wishes so you can have um, what it is that, that you want. You can have that happy, balanced, supportive, wonderful, joyous home life, um, family life, you know, however it, it would look for you. Um, let's take a look at money for Monday as well. Okay, so money and finances for Monday. Right, a season for everything. Yes, there is. Financial audit. Don't forget where you came from. Lucky number eight, interesting. And divine intervention so very interesting day financially um it is the 30th of january here so if you're in the uk and you haven't done your tax return and you need to um there's a little reminder there for you <laughs> it may be time to do your tax return it has to be done by 31st of midnight on 31st of january i believe if you're in the uk and you're required to do one so <laughs> i've done mine yay uh, <laughs> 
um, a season for everything. Yes, there is a season for everything. So um, it may be a time when your finance is a little bit lower. It may be a time when your finance is a little bit higher. And, and there is a reminder here that everything goes through cycles, including finances, including the markets. I mean, it's more obvious in the markets. We see it go through like a, a, um, like a 30 year cycle for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and, and there is this, um, I want to say a reminder that everything is as it should be, is as it is meant to be, and that things are always changing, things are always improving for you. Lucky number eight coming in, I like that, because eight is um, a very lucky number when it comes to money and finance. It's a very fortunate number. It can be a number of... Um, of business success as well. So again, I want to bring Maneki Neko in here again with number eight, because that relates to him too. Number eight is seen as a very lucky number in, in Asia as well. They recognise the numerology of number eight, which is a powerful money number. Absolutely. Um, and keeping, it's good for keeping money. <laughs> it's good for making money and keeping money. Um, and that is very much, I want to say, a, a focus of today's energy. Um, how can you make more money and how can you keep it? What do you need to do differently? Um, what do you need to shift and change? It, do you need to make changes? Are you in a different season of your life than, than when you made the financial choices that you're currently living? You know, do you need to change something? Um, and for some people, there is going to be some healing to do with money here. So don't forget where you came from. That could be that... Um, there could be an inheritance coming through or windfall from your family for some people um, or some assistance, some advice coming through from a family member or somebody close to you, somebody that you knew when you were growing up, perhaps. Um, for other people, it is going to be more healing if you came from poverty, if you came from, you know, a, a poorer background and you feel perhaps that's held you back in your life. Or if, even if it didn't hold you back and you made lots of money, but now you're, you're wrapped with guilt about it, you may be struggling there financially, um, not financially, <laughs> emotionally. Um, which might, you know, in turn provoke you to spend all your money. You know, you might have trouble holding on to it. So with the lucky number eight at the top here, kind of overseeing everything, it is about having money and keeping it. Um, and I think that there could be some interesting synchronicity happening as well today when it comes to money and finances um, on a personal level or perhaps on a, on a national, international level. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the markets if there's anything unusual happening there. So... Next, we will move on to Tuesday, Tuesday, the 31st of January. So Tuesday's cards, we have number nine, solitude. We have 35, the koala spirit. Spirit has a plan. We have the three of air. So a little bit more of a sedate energy for Tuesday. There is some sadness coming in here as well with the three of air there. So there could be literally something to grieve and you may feel like you kind of need to step away from the world. Um, there, there could be something difficult going on in your family. You know, you may have lost somebody recently or been reminded of, of something sad or, or difficult. Um, but there is a reminder here that there is a wisdom in everything, even if things are difficult, even if it's a challenging day in one way or another. There's definitely this impulse to kind of cocoon yourself, to, to pull yourself away from other people's energy, to sit with you, with yourself, to, to sit with whatever it is that you, you may be going through, that you may be struggling with. Um, or to just step away from other people. If other people are struggling around you, if they're not doing so well and they're leaning on you a little bit too much, you may need to step away. I also want to highlight uh, spiritual practice and spiritual study for Tuesday as well. That comes up to me um, as a, a, a powerful theme, spiritual study. But study in general, I want to say, with, with the lovely book on here. But it is connected more to spirituality than anything else. So very kind of sombre energy today. It's almost like a funeral in some ways. Um, it feels like something's shifting, something's changing in the grander scheme of things, something's dying in the grander scheme of things, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But there is always a grieving period when we have to let go of something. So it could be a good day to do some decluttering as well on Tuesday to let go of things, because it is a day of letting go, and that can help you energetically to let go of other things. If there are things that, you know, if you've got a bag of things you've been, bag of clothes or knickknacks you've been intending to take down to the charity shop, now's the time to do it clear that energy away and it will help you to clear through whatever it is you're dealing with at the moment um there's a lot of wisdom coming through i want to highlight the third eye as well i'm very drawn to this um on on the koala's third eye here i'm very drawn to that very strong connection with spirit today very strong connection with your guides with your angels um i think you could be able to channel quite easily today it's a great day for channeling and write down what you get as well um if you're working on a book, I keep going to books. <laughs> it's funny, I don't normally go to books with, with this particular card, but that's where I'm drawn to today. Um, 
I'm drawn to books if you're writing a book or if you're channeling a book, you know, I feel like your guides really want to help you with writing that book, particularly if it is an esoteric one or if you're writing a course or something like that, if you're writing coursework or if you're a teacher, um, you know, whether it's a, a teacher in a more traditional sense or, or a spiritual teacher, if you help people. Um, but a little bit of a song of the day, but that's not to say that the energy can't be useful, because I think it can be for some of us where our psychic ability is going to be absolutely on fire on Tuesday, even if the people around us are a little bit, you know, the energy is a bit tamped down. Um, and I think because people are a little bit quiet, energetically a little bit low around us, that's why others, I think, are going to sense a little bit more freedom just because there's it feels like there's less chatter in the ether on Tuesday um so it may be easier to actually bring messages through to actually go into that deeper spiritual work that deeper meditative work into the astral realms um into the higher realms connecting with 5d 6d 7d 8d 9d um 10d okay yeah uh, and, and possibly above now they're just showing me white light okay sorry they, they list them all to me so I said them out out loud and then they just showed me white light okay all right um yeah absolutely a good day for communication with higher realms with higher dimensions higher creatures there so very very interesting day again the the topic of aliens ai um ai and aliens coming up for tuesday as well for some reason there so that's that's popping into my mind as well so very very interesting day so i want to say don't wallow in it whatever it is if, if you are struggling if you are grieving if you are sad about something Try not to wallow in it. Pay attention to everything that's happening around you as well. Do the healing that you need to do. And it's absolutely OK to, to grieve and to go through a period of, of sadness or grieving if you need to. But but don't get stuck there. OK, don't get stuck there and don't get dragged back into something that you stepped away from because it could be somebody else's emotions pulling you down because there's a lot of that in the system on Tuesday. So. So let's see what else we have for Tuesday. We have clear away the old narrative. Yes, so literally decluttering a little bit. Um, and it could be about changes that have happened in your life or that are happening and we have to let go of old systems, old way of doing, old ways of doing things. And this is necessary as we move into the age of Aquarius because we do need to let go of the old systems. They do need to crumble. And we do not need to obey anybody who tries to tell us that the new system has to look a very specific way that they've come up with and we all have to live in pods and eat insects. OK, we absolutely do not have to do that. All right. But it is absolutely OK that the old systems are crumbling. I just want to, to really emphasise that it is absolutely OK and normal and needed that the old world is crumbling. It needs to go. OK, this is the difficult part, the messy part where we have to watch it all fall apart and we have to not fall for the tricks of those who would us into a new prison system so rainbow light becomes white yes oh wow um a lot of wisdom coming through from the higher realms a lot of light rays coming through um and there is a reminder that we are all one in the rainbow light becomes white card as well there's a there's a reminder we're all one yes we are all different and we are all one because we cannot not be we cannot be separate from one another we cannot be separate from our creator from god from love because that is all there is all right um we are god godding <laughs> as neil donald walsh puts it um and when we remember that and we remember to try and be kind to one another life becomes a lot easier, becomes a lot less stressful, and it allows positive change to happen on that transformative 10 one. How can you build on this? Yes, that is, I think, one of the questions coming through. Um, we may be sad because something's happened, you know, we've lost something, but how can we build? How can we move forwards from that? How do we find our ground? How do we find our solid ground, our foundation on 44.8? Um, how do we bring something new into matter? What do we do next? And and that's not a, a bad question. That's a great question. What are we going to do next? Wow, how do we build on this? OK, so there's a void, there's a gap. Nature abhors a vacuum. So what are we going to put in it? Because something is going to show up if we don't decide. Remember who you are. I am. Yes. <laughs> what I was saying, remember who you are. I think there is a certain amount of spiritual remembrance coming in on Tuesday. And that could be something that you already cognitively know. It's just a little reminder there. Remember who you are. You are the I am presence in human form. There's a lot of wisdom coming through here for Tuesday as well. So a great day for spiritual practice and meditation. Try and carve out some time in your day to meditate if you can. Um, gratitude isn't about being small. It's about opening your arms wide. Yes, a reminder there that even when we lose things, um, we never truly lose anyone or anything. And also, um, I want to say as the world changes, um, 
and we, we do talk about gratitude a lot in, in the law of attraction and manifesting and all that kind of stuff and in all kinds of spiritual work of course um, but there is this reminder and when I wrote this card I was like yes that's such a good explanation gratitude isn't about being small it's not about oh thank you for these tiny crumbs because I'm such an, a, a lowly and unworthy earthworm no it's about how knowing, knowing how worthy you are opening your arms wide and going bring it on universe <laughs> bring it on um but the universe can only send you what you are willing to accept or what you are energetically aligned to accept. OK, and that's the tricky bit. That's the tricky bit. Gratitude is not a trick. It's not about playing small. It's actually about playing very big and <laughs> remembering who you truly are and what energies you are really dealing with. So a bit of gratitude practice, bit of prayer would be beautiful to bring in for Tuesday, I think. Um, and giving thanks, maybe if, if we have lost somebody, um, giving thanks for what we did have, I think would be very, very appropriate. OK. Um, you know, remembering somebody's life in a, in a, in a positive way or, or remembering previous things that we had or experienced. So let's take a look at romance and relationships here. This can be for friendships and platonic relationships as well. For Tuesday, the 31st of January. So work together for each other. Oh, I like that. Commitment, make it second appearance this week. I have shuffled these. Completion and fulfillment on 66. Take some time together. Celebration anniversary. All right. All righty. OK, so again, there is this question about commitment coming up again today, coming up again, um, came up on Monday. What is commitment to you? What does it mean? Are you, do you have it? Are you giving it? Is it? Are you happy with what you have right now? Are you committing to life? I want to say as well. Are you committing to the life that you want or are you living a completely different life? than the one you want and saying that you're committing to that but you're actually not well I want that life over there but I'm actually doing all of the things that commit to this lifestyle not that one um yeah and that goes with the relationships as well are you committing to the wrong person okay or are you not committing to the right person and that's different so work together for each other there is a need to actually look at your relationships if you're in a relationship um how can you better work together? How can you improve things together? How can you maybe time to have a conversation about that, you know, and sit down, not not a heavy conversation, a nice conversation. What would you like? How could we work together better? How can we be more compatible? How can we be kinder to each other? Completion or fulfillment comes up, um, 66, 12, 3. So there, there is this um, meeting of hearts potentially on Tuesday. It's a very interesting day. I don't want to say so much for new relationships I feel more to do with existing ones um, there's a meeting of hearts where we can find new levels of understanding new levels of um, compatibility and, and working together you know speaking to our current partner or boyfriend or husband or spouse or wife you know um, have a chat with them because I, I feel like there are things that we can sort out today on Tuesday things that we can improve for each other if we're really committed to working together and I think it can really balance out some some older problems there and and really draw a line under some things that need to be left in the past um okay take some time together yeah if, if you can take a little bit of quality time with your loved ones that that could be wonderful as well celebration anniversary so it could be some sort of anniversary of a passing I feel because it's tinged with sadness this card here the celebration anniversary it's tinged with sadness um like this whole day is but uh sadness and wisdom too I think there's a lot of a lot of wisdom to be gained from Tuesday's energy let's take a look at money finance and business so what's the money oracle got for us we have gold silver coins okay another 11 there that's interesting abundance dance <laughs> energy of abundance so it is all about abundance you know we had abundance cards for monday as well so abundance seems to be a powerful theme and even when we lose things it does not mean we are not abundant even when someone dies passes over we are not not abundant because that's happened okay the old world is crumbling that doesn't make us not abundant <laughs> absolutely not we're incredibly abundant we're about to to create this new world and it's going to take time I'm afraid but but it is happening and we are seeing more and more a splitting of ways and in my podcast um which I started in gosh was it 2020 I started it because I wanted to help people with the awakening I wanted to help them through the difficult times in 2020 um I call it the the spiritual support crew podcast I will actually link to the um to the playlist 
so you can actually go back and listen to those episodes if you haven't already my podcast there Um, because my intention was genuinely to help people um, to help people through this period because I was aware that we are we were um, reaching a, a parting of ways as such and it's been called different things by different people the way my guides described it to me was they called it the great separation and that's what I was calling it the great separation a parting of ways where some of humanity goes that way some of humanity goes this way so it, it, it's a big splitting of ways um, big big changes where it's almost like humanity splits into two species in a way which could be more accurate than I thought originally. Um, it, it's like we become so different, so, so different, split into two groups. Um, and one group is going this way, sort of the, the shorter version, the shorter path to enlightenment and, and to a better future. And this 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 group over here is taking the darker path, um, the perhaps the longer path, you know, the, the more difficult one in some ways. Um, although neither of those are particularly easy. Um, but um, it, it is it's a very challenging time to live through right now it's a very challenging time I've said that before this isn't an easy era to live in this isn't an easy age to live in we have all this modern technology and all of these supposed labor saving devices that's supposed to make our life easier but it's such a hard time to live through so painful so difficult um, so there is this reminder here that no matter what's happening financially at the moment we are still abundant the energy of abundance is still here with us we can still profit in this time um, and indeed, in, in times of great upheaval, is that is when uh, people have made the biggest fortunes. So keep your eyes open, look out for opportunities today. Not necessarily huge ones, but look out for opportunities and remember that. Also, gold and silver coins coming up, so that could be a nudge for you to investigate um, whether it's right for you to invest in gold and silver. Now, I'm not sponsored by anybody <laughs> to do with that, and this is not financial advice, as I always say. Um, but there is a little nudge here connected to gold and silver coins, so or gold and silver bullion, so that might be something for you to look into. Or it might be that you decide in your business that you will accept gold and silver coins as, as payment. Why not? I do. You can pay me in gold and silver coins. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> I will always accept that as payment. Um, what else do we have here? So gifts of time and money. Poverty isn't holy. Yes, it's wonderful to be generous, but it does not help to drag yourself down. And I was thinking this the other day, um, that this came through to me, I think it was yesterday, um, I was watching something on YouTube, as you do, and I, I was thinking to myself, wow, I feel like a lot of people need a reminder that you cannot make yourself sick enough to heal somebody else. You cannot make yourself poor enough to enrich somebody else. You cannot make yourself miserable enough to make someone else happy, unless they're literally a psychopath, but no. <laughs> You know, that, that's kind of not the point. Um, you can't do that. Poverty is not holy. All right. If you are a holy, enlightened person and you choose to, you know, disrobe yourself of, of all your earthly possessions and give them away. And that's wonderful because you're in this state of flow where you can just manifest everything you need from one moment to another. And you're never you never without anything. That's wonderful. OK, that, that's how Jesus would have done it. That's how avatars do it. But no one's requiring you to do that. No one is requiring you to live in lack and misery and poverty and difficulty just for the sake of it. It doesn't make you more holy. OK, it's wonderful to give money to charity, to help people, to lift people up if you can, if you can afford to do that. But don't put yourself into difficulty um, because energetically you haven't actually done a very good thing there. You, you've done something really can be quite negative. So be very careful about that. Um, we can really fall into this um I don't know if it comes from Judeo-Christian origins or, or what, but this this whole thing about, oh, yes, you know, the the, the meek and the poor, they're, they're the ones who, who were more holy than the rich ones, says the person sitting on the golden chair with a big, you know, golden hat on. OK, um, <laughs> don't fall for the hype. Don't fall for the lies. OK, abundance is your nature. Abundance is your birthright. All right. We all have that that birthright. Um, gifts of time and money. Yes, could be a wonderful day to actually reach out to people and help them. And there is that reminder to do that and to continue to do that moving forwards. Maybe you'll start giving to a charity. Maybe you'll sponsor a donkey today. <laughs> Something like that. Or as a gift, you know, for somebody else. And um, there is this nudge um, to be altruistic, to, but to do it in the right way, to do it in the right way, not in a way that destroys you. OK, because that's a zero sum gain and that doesn't help anybody. And also not in a way that is manipulative. All right. It's not don't put strings on something that you give to somebody. OK, that's manipulation. So we will move on to Wednesday. Let's take a look at Wednesday's cards. 
So, cards for Wednesday the 1st of February. Welcome February. We have number four, Discontent and Boredom. Number 25, Elephant Spirit, Learn from the Past. And the five of Earth, Fears Surrounding Money, The Wisdom to Accept Help from Others, Uncertain Self-Employment. Okay, so a bit of a tricky day again on Wednesday. We could be feeling uncertain about money, uncertain about the future, um, maybe some concerns with the direction we're going in. Maybe we really want to um, to change direction. There, there could be some frustration, um, some dissatisfaction with our lot, I feel, on Wednesday. And I think we may be failing to see the bigger picture as well. We might be really focusing on minutiae, on things that are annoying us at the moment. Things could be really getting up your nose, getting on your trunk <laughs> on Wednesday. Um, and I think it is a day to take a deep breath, step back and look at the bigger picture, because I think there could be a lot that we're missing on Wednesday. We're not seeing everything that we have. We may be feeling a little bit ungrateful on Wednesday, um, maybe acting a little brattish, <laughs> shall we say, on Wednesday. Um, so just check yourself on Wednesday if you start to, to spiral or go in a direction of, oh, everything's awful. Um, stay off Twitter. It's not a good place when you're in that kind of mood. It will just sort of validate that all the terrible things that you that you think or, or think might be true. Um, difficult energy, but I think it's quite down to earth energy. We could be stuck in our minds as well. The ego mind running rampant through this energy here. Um, stuck in the lower mind. And there is wisdom. There is a reminder that things always change. Nothing ever stays exactly the same. You know, the elephant here, spirit is here to remind us that we have to keep moving. We have to keep moving forwards. And sometimes it's slow and boring. And that's OK. All right. It, it is what it is on Wednesday. Could be a frustrating day at work. I mean, Wednesday isn't the best day at work because it is hump day. You know, it's it's like, oh, really? Do I have to do this? Do I have to carry on doing this? I've got three more days of this. Oh, till I can have my weekend, you know. Um, definitely some dissatisfaction coming through. Definitely some frustration coming through in many areas of life, you know, whether you're go, go, you go to a workplace or not. Um, Let's see. Yeah, but I think we're really missing the bigger picture. I think we're missing something. I think there is something good that we could actually be having, we could actually be achieving, but we're choosing not to look at it. So we might have a bit of a bad attitude. Or if it's not you, other people around you might have a bit of a bad attitude on Wednesday because it's just that kind of shitty energy. You know, we don't want to be good. We don't want to behave ourselves. We just want to sulk in the corner. It's a bit of a sulky kind of difficult energy for Wednesday. So let's take a look at our, our spirit message card. See, that one wants to come in off the bottom. Okay. Star being star seed. Oh, well, OK. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. If you're a star seed, yeah, you're going to find this time on Earth very frustrating, very difficult to live through. Um, yeah, the star seeds, if that's something you identify with or if you know someone who's a star seed, they could be having a bit of a crap day today. It might not be the best day for them. Playtime is over. Yeah, take time to heal. Oh, it's another number four. OK. So it is about getting ourselves into balance. And, and if things are going a little bit slowly, if it is a little bit frustrating in your life and things aren't progressing as swiftly as you would like them to, like the playtime is over. It's like, come on, I want to get going now. I want to move forwards. Maybe it's not the right moment. Um, very often when we have a quiet time in our life that may feel a little bit boring, may feel like nothing's really happening, it's because the universe is giving you time and space to rest and heal. All right. And I think that could be um, the underlying reason for today's energy going a little bit slowly, maybe feeling a bit frustrating. Maybe it's time for you to spend some time resting, healing, um, taking some time out. You know, if you can take the day off work, maybe it's the time to, to take a duvet day or something. Maybe it's time to stay at home. Maybe it's time to be very gentle with yourself and see what needs to change, what's making you feel frustrated, maybe to delve into that a little bit deeper and to see what is underlying there, um, the underlying causes for your frustration or discontentment, what needs to be healed. Um, so it is, it, it's a tricky day, frustrating energy. We want to go places and do things and it's just not happening. Or maybe we're worried that we won't be able to achieve our goals, that we won't succeed, that we'll fail. You know, all of these fears and anxieties coming up. Very, very challenging day. But just remember, you are not your mind. You have a mind. You are not your mind. You are... Um, the master of your mind and you can be the master of your mind. Um, a book I recommend frequently, which is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Um, pick it up and read it today or reread it if you haven't already. Um, yeah, get control over the ego mind. Don't let it run amok on Wednesday. It's okay to play and explore. You don't have to know everything. Yeah, and it's interesting because this is in stark contrast to playtime is over. All right. Um, 
I want to say things aren't moving forwards right now because you need to heal, grow, and then you'll move forwards in a different way. All right. How we move when we are a tiny baby is different to how we move when we are a little bit older and then a little bit older and then as an adult. We move differently. We're different beings. Our bodies have changed. Our bodies are different. OK, uh, we might crawl. We might hop, skip, or we might walk with a cane. <laughs> you know, we, it, it's different how we do things. We can't expect to proceed in the manner that we were working out over here when we reach over here. OK, it will be different, which is why we need to heal and grow first. Um, and yes, there is this impulse to move forwards, to, to rush into something new. Um, but there is a reminder that you don't have to be quite so serious about it. You can play, you can explore, you can be messy. All right. You don't have to be perfect every time, even if you were told that you did. And I mean, goodness me, the school system, it tries to certainly my experience of the school system was that you have to be perfect first time at something, otherwise you don't get to do it again. <laughs> you know, if you don't have like a natural aptitude instantly for something, very often you don't get to do it again. Um, that's, that's a terrible lesson to teach young people. Um, absolutely dreadful example to set. I remember, um, I'm actually quite tall, if you haven't met me, I'm quite tall, I'm, I'm over 5'10". And um, <laughs> when I was at primary school, I was a year ahead of myself, so I was a little bit smaller than some of the other kids in my class because I was a year younger, although I was already quite tall. Um, and I remember we were doing high jump for the first time ever. Right, for the first time, I'd never done high jump before in my life. Um, and I remember <laughs> being there in this class, and it, it was like the only time in my primary school years that we did high jump. It was just this one time, and they said it, you basically had like three goes, and if you couldn't do it, you got kicked out and to to, to play with a bat and ball in in the the playground, which was really demeaning and embarrassing. It was almost like, oh well, you're not good enough. You've got to go out in the playground in the rain now with with these kids playing with these horrible wooden bats and balls and really demeaning. Um, because I couldn't do it because nobody explained to me properly how I was supposed to do it. All right. Um, we're all doing scissors. Nobody was doing Fosbury flop or anything, but um, we we're supposed to be doing scissors and I couldn't work out how to do it. Nobody showed me how to do it correctly. And so I got kicked out and I thought I couldn't do it. And I was so frustrated going, well, I should be able to do it. I'm, I've, I'm quite tall. I've got long legs. I'm quite athletic. Why, why can't I do this? And it was really demeaning. Um, and it wasn't until a few years later, I went to a different school when I was older um, and somebody actually showed me how to do it properly. And I was like, this is easy. I can practically step over this. I got, you know, I'm, I'm a giraffe. I can do this. Um, but we get this terrible, if I hadn't had that experience, I might've gone through my whole life thinking, oh, I can't do high jump. I'm shit. You know, I'm, I'm crap at that. I can't do it. Um, which would be terrible. Um, and, and I mean, it wouldn't really matter very much because it's just high jump and <laughs> it's not something I really did in the future, but I was aware I could do it. Um, but we have those experiences. I, I met a girl I, I used to work with who, who said to me one time, oh, well, I would have loved to play the piano. Um, I don't know how we got into that subject. Oh, I would have loved to play the piano, but I can't because my hands are too small. And I just looked at her like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, I, I used to play piano. I have loads of friends who play piano who are musicians. And she said, oh, yeah, you know, when I was at primary school, they told me my hands were too small so I wouldn't be able to play the piano. And I was like, what on earth are you talking about? I started playing when I was five. Um, and she'd gone through her whole life believing that she could not play the piano because her hands were too small. She was an adult by this point, in her 30s, I think. And I was like, why on earth would you think that? But we can... the The... the um, the false beliefs that can be instilled in us when we're kids, when we're not allowed to play at something, when we're not allowed to have a go and keep having a go at it in practice um, to build confidence in ourselves. If we can't do it straight off or if some someone comes up with some reason why we can't do it straight away, oh, you won't be able to do it, so you can't do it. That's awful. That's really destructive to human beings. And unfortunately, we have been instilled with far too many of those beliefs and most of us don't even know we have them. So that might be something for you to look at today. If you're feeling discontented about something, if there's something you didn't do that you would have liked to do, maybe it's time to revisit that. Maybe it's time to consider why you didn't do it. And do you want to do it now? Why not? Why not take up horse riding? It doesn't matter that you're in your 60s. Why not? OK, so very interesting one. I don't know where that rant came from. but Clearly that wanted to come through for Wednesday. So body soul alignment as well. Yes, it is about coming 
better into alignment and that's where the time for healing comes in as well becoming more of our true self right that's the frustration because we are not being our true selves um and i mean who is right now on the earth plane who is um as human beings go probably none of us or if there are any avatars on earth right now they might be doing it but there might be like one or two of them right now if for any i don't know i haven't met any um but i think this is the 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 cause of our frustration is that we are not being our authentic selves. We are not in alignment with who we truly are. So that's something to look at. So let's take a look at relationships. This is romantic relationships, friendships, uh, platonic relationships here. See what we've got going on for Wednesday. feels like it might be a bit of an antagonistic energy in all relationships, but let's have a look. Completion and fulfilment. What we've already done, what we want to do not into it yeah that's a yeah long distance relationship that we may be feeling some distance with our loved ones even if we are actually close to them even if we're not far apart we might feel some distance to notice i put the cards really far apart <laughs> i didn't do that on the other ones so yeah there's some emotional distance there um also we may not be feeling very friendly towards our partner you know if we're supposed to be meeting up with with a loved one we might not want to you know, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, you might be like, oh, I don't fancy it tonight, I don't feel like it, don't want to do it. Um, you know, don't take it personally. If, if somebody blows you off on Wednesday, you know, if you have a date and they blow you off, don't take it personally. It's just a, a, a difficult energy, it's a difficult day. Um, and yes, it, it is about change within the self as well. So it could be that some relationships actually end today, but it's not necessarily a, a, a permanent ending. Okay, it might just be this difficult energy that's causing that to happen emotional disconnect well yeah <laughs> that makes sense and divine timing yeah not the best day for dates not the best day for for, for first dates <laughs> definitely not a good day to break up with someone because you may not be thinking very clearly um yeah it, it's a tricky old day tricky tricky old day but it's happening for a reason so i'd say go with it roll with it um spend some time in contemplation look at yourself in the mirror look at what you're doing and maybe consider what it is that you need to to heal but you need to, to take time out to, to heal within yourself so that you can move forwards and actually enjoy your future okay it's not about succeeding or achieving or being productive it's about enjoying yourself that's the point so let's take a look at money and finance and business because that is a part of the world we live in like it or not we all need money to live on <laughs> it's just the reality right now and that's okay it's an energy of exchange so we have you are already abundant there's another reminder of that this week abundance frequency <laughs> i have shuffled these maniki neko i knew was going to come out again there we go and coming soon oh that's exciting that's very exciting so you may get a little preview of things to come in the future financially and that could be where some of this um this fear or anxiety is coming from some of this uncertainty to do with money business the future because maybe you have had a glimpse of something and immediately your inner critic jumps in and goes you won't be able to do that you'll fail at that you'll do that wrong um that'll be taken away from you you won't do it properly you won't be able to do it, you know, or, or any number of a hundred thousand other things it could say to you to try and knock you down, to try and prevent you from stepping out of your comfort zone. And that's all it's doing. It's just trying to get you to step out of your comfort zone. And it thinks it's keeping you safe, but it's actually keeping you stuck. OK, so any fears that come up like that on Wednesday, take them with a huge pinch of salt. Take them with a um, a mine of salt. <laughs> um because there's something very, very exciting brewing here, very exciting cooking when it comes to money and finance. And I think it may not show up immediately, but you'll kind of have a sense of it. And that's where some of the frustration comes in. Um, but you've got to take this time out. You've got to do this healing work first. So let's move on now to Thursday, the 2nd of February, 2023. Our cards today. Number four, Foundation and Achievements. Number 13, Cat Spirit and the Page of Air. Okay, so the Cat Spirit, claim your independence. Interesting. I rather like Thursday for new beginnings. Um, although it's not, not a week of huge new beginnings because there's a lot going on behind the scenes, behind the, um, under the surface. Um, I do feel like it's a good week where we could actually week a good day <laughs> Thursday is a good day um where we could actually 
make some new changes, start some new things, kind of at a very kind of base level um, on that number four energy. We can kind of lay the foundation for things that we want to actually do and achieve. It does feel like that sort of energy. Um, and with 13, four coming in, it does feel like endings and beginnings coming in on, on 13. Um, so it's the blueprint, the individual um the individual leading the blueprint of how they want things to be it is about boundaries as well with the cat being there as well being independent knowing your own mind and doing your own thing not being a follower um not necessarily a leader either just literally walking your own path being unique being you being different being authentic um is the theme for thursday i feel for some people there is a theme of moving house as well so there may be a need or a desire to find somewhere new to live, to find a new home particularly. It's not just about a house, it's about having a home. Where is your home? What is home to you, I want to say? Um, and that doesn't necessarily relate to bricks and mortar either. It could be about changing country as well. There could be an impulse to do that. Um, you could be curious to go and live in another uh, in another country, in another culture, among other people, um, or just to change region. So it is an in very interesting energy coming in for Thursday. It could be pushing us in new directions, nudging us to consider new ideas that maybe we hadn't even thought of, you know, let alone thought if it was something that we could even do for ourselves. So very interesting energy there. Let's take a look, see what else we've got for Thursday. What other energy showing up there? Because it is about, it feels like about new foundations is what I want to say, new foundations. And letting go of old things that no longer serve. That's, I think, a continuing theme. Right. The more peace you have, the more transformation is possible. Yes. Get up and go do the thing. <laughs> There's definitely a desire to do that. Very impatient energy with the page of air. Um, and stab the onion. Okay. It's time to do the thing. Yeah, stab the onion and get up and go do the thing. They're, they're practically the same. <laughs> Stab the onion is about getting to the heart of the matter immediately rather than peeling an onion, which would take forever. <laughs> um, you sometimes hear like in, in therapy or um, in counselling, we talk about healing different layers of an issue and it's like peeling an onion. There's always another layer underneath stabbing the onion, which is a, a saying that um, my good friend Jem came up with, Jem from Wild Vida. Um, <laughs> it means getting to the heart of the matter immediately. She's an Aries, can you tell? Um, I will link her details below as well if you'd like to find out more about her and the work that she does, which is rather amazing, which is all about self-sovereignty. Um, right, stab the onion. Yeah, no more fannying around. <laughs> so there's definitely this in the system that there's a desire to, to get moving, to do something different. And it may only be small steps at this stage. It does feel like laying a framework for something, um, putting down a foundation for something, perhaps um, investigating how to do something, mapping it out maybe. Um, but it is also that there is this reminder that peace is necessary to have transformation. And I do mean transformation within, not necessarily on the outside, because we can change lots of things on the outside without knowing inner peace. But inner peace, we are reminded um, that that is the key to have permanent and positive transformation in our life. And look how ordered the cards are here, how I've put them out now in three really, really tidy columns. Um, so it could be literally about writing out some sort of plan with columns, because <laughs> that's kind of what I've created here without really thinking about it, without really, because um, I'm an intuitive reader, I lay the cards out intuitively as well. And sometimes the pattern that they form or the, the shape that they're in can be meaningful as well. It's very interesting how my guides work with me. Um, yeah, impulsive energy, we might want to shoot off and do something. And we can do that. We absolutely can do that. Um, but um, take your brain with you, okay? If if your impulsivity takes you in a direction, take your brain with you. I want to say right place, right time. A number, another number 13. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we've got 13 energy coming up as a strong theme, and that is 13.4, of course. We've got another four there. So 13.4, are our, is, that's our number numerology for the day, for Thursday. Um, spirit is on the line, answer the call. <laughs> okay. Again, this is another day for synchronicity. Look at that. Spirits on the line, answer the call with right place, right time and independence. Um, yeah, th there could be some very interesting serendipity or synchronicity that actually happens, an opportunity that comes up right at, this, at the right moment for a new start, for something a little bit different, for moving in a new direction. So if that's what you want, take it. 
Okay, stab the onion. Don't hesitate. Stab the onion. <laughs> okay, rainbow light becomes white. So there's a reminder there that we are all one, which is really beautiful. And, and we may need that reminder as well. Star seed, star, star being star seed. Oh, okay. So we've seen both of these cards already once or possibly twice this week but that that is an important theme so the star seed theme if you are a star seed if you identify with with that energy with that label um or if you suspect that might be you you know i would say go with it because it, it's quite a strong theme for a lot of people on earth at the moment you know if you do feel different and if something comes up which is a whole new opportunity then it might resonate very very strongly with you if, if that's the case go for it okay it feels like there's the rainbow tribe coming together here and i'm not talking about the lgbt community i, I, don't, I don't mean that i mean the rainbow tribe as in um the spiritual tribe coming together there's a spiritual tribe actually coming together and i think thursday is going to be a powerful day to actually meet people who are very much on your wavelength or perhaps part of your soul family so that's going to be a very interesting one on that note let's take a look at romance and relationships also friendships um so you see what's going on there with our soul family with our soul mates as well so children and family well-being comes first yes it does that's such a theme this week and it's another 13 so transformation yes there's a very strong energy of transformation coming through on thursday um and a very important reminder that we must be taking care of ourselves as well. Um, and finding peace within is also well-being. OK, that's incredibly important for our well-being. Um, I love you more than you know, coming in on four. So again, there's more 13, four, 13s and fours coming in here. Very, very potent numerology. Um, high highs and low lows. That's a 35. I think that's a 35 as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. So 35, 8. Interesting. So really um the mind leading the blueprint but perhaps the higher mind leading the blueprint leading um leading us in a new direction the higher mind leading us in a new direction um yeah might be a little bit of an emo emotional roller coaster when it comes to romance on on thursday a little bit of emotional roller coaster particularly if somebody says oh i love you drop everything and move in with me and they live like i don't know halfway across the country halfway across the world <laughs> Okay, it's kind of a bit of a sense of overwhelm there with relationships. Um, there is also the slightly more grounding energy of children and family. That, that could be something that prevents you from doing what you want to do. If you do have children or if you need to be near family, family members, maybe who aren't very well. Um, so it may be a case of actually looking very carefully at your situation and seeing if they actually are holding you back or if you're holding yourself back and using them as an excuse. Um a theme of well-being ever present very very important this whole week particularly today i love you more than you know there could be um somebody could actually open up to you today somebody could message you and say actually i didn't want to say anything but i'm going to now i really like you <laughs> you know um can we start something together you know there could be declarations of love declarations of <laughs> of attraction um exciting energy um but a little bit overwhelming yeah a little bit of a roller coaster i think on on Thursday there. Are we going to take more? No, we're going to there. Okay. Um, just check in with my guides. So um, now we're going to have a look at money, finance, business, see what's going on there. I and mean, it's an interesting old day for sure. Absolutely fascinating day. So what if we oh you want three to come out at once? Well why not? The universe is vast and generous. Yes it is. Yes it is. It's a good idea to remember that. Love, money, health and joy. Again, health and well-being coming up, being highlighted and love to. Um, money is not all there is. Money is important, but we have to have these other things as well. Of course, we have to have balance in the different aspects of our life and pot of gold on 10. So again, that can be an opportunity. It's not necessarily a windfall. I think for some people it could be a windfall or the opportunity to um to earn some money um an opportunity of a, a helpful investment or something like that maybe in your business or maybe you you're going to invest in someone else's that works for everyone really nicely um or a, a new idea coming up and it's interesting that the pot of gold is sat under the rainbow that's <laughs> that's interesting too it's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow kind of um analogy coming through there so something perhaps a little bit unexpected financially but fortunate good fortune um showing up for thursday when it comes to money finance and business um the universe is vast and generous we just have to remember that 
okay and transformation is possible as it says on the card underneath I just kind of want to I almost want to read on like it's one big card there um yeah transformation and change is absolutely possible you know so if you are itching to to move to go somewhere else to start something new you can do it um you can do it and I think the the financial resources will be provided to you they will show up if you're willing to take the necessary steps um but you must remember to find that balance in all different aspects of of your life so got any more here one off the bottom you want okay give to receive not to get Yes, stay in the right mindset as well when it comes to money. Um, and again, there's a reminder not to be manipulative, not to try and be manipulative with the universe as well, not to be manipulative with other people because that will come back to haunt you. Yeah, don't give to other people with strings attached. Don't give them money with strings attached. Don't lend them money with strings attached. That's not fair. Either lend them money or don't, okay? But forget strings. Um, and also remember that when you give, when you are generous or when you donate to somebody, when you... Um, like I, I donated to a Reiki channel on, on YouTube um, yesterday just because I, I get a lot of value out of their videos and that's something I wanted to do. Um, but I didn't do it to get something. I did it because I want to um, I wanted to say thank you to them. I wanted to show gratitude. I wanted them to receive that. And I know that something will be returned to me. I, I will not lose anything by giving that to them. I, I know that. I understand the laws of the universe. I wasn't doing it specifically to try and get something. Oh, I'm going to give this to this person and then the universe has to send me something. Well, no, that wasn't really my, my mindset there. Um, although that is how some people think. I do know people who are very manipulative, who go out of their way to do favours for people so that they are then in their debt. Don't be one of those people. That's really horrible. And if you have people like that around you, it may be the moment to step away from them. Or people who try and manipulate you by lending you money but attaching strings or giving you things but attaching um, clauses that you have to do this for them, you have to do that for them. It could be time to get away from manipulative people. So let's move on to Friday. So Friday the 3rd of February, we have number 16, Disruption. We have number 27, Fox Spirit, Think on Your Feet. And we have the King of Water. So this could be quite a tricky day. Okay, just turn my angel around there. Hmm, not the easiest energy. It's never particularly helpful to see this card. The disruption card is very difficult. It always brings challenges, but it also brings change. And sometimes that is necessary. So especially if we've been resisting change, sometimes the change will be foisted upon us <laughs> by the universe. Um, so you may, re with the fox spirit here, you may really need to think on your feet. You may really need to have your A game. Bring your A game on Friday. Um, have your wits about you. OK, because there may be unexpected changes. could be interesting to see what goes on on the world stage, I want to say, on Friday. That could be quite interesting um, to see what's happening there, if laws are being kind of passed that could impact humanity. You know, they might be doing it secretly. So pay attention. We could be being roped into something without realising it, or we could be being tied in to a system more and more, which is what they're trying to do at the moment, um, that we don't agree with. And we may need to react quite quickly to act and to actually do something positive. Of course, we should always act, not react. Um, but we must approach it with a mature attitude. The King of Water, you know, he is, um, he has a big heart. He is wise. He approaches it with maturity, um, but also with kindness and with an eye to the greater good. Okay, so we must bear that in mind at the moment. Um, hmm. On a personal level, it could just be that... Um, unexpected problems showing up it could be a little bit annoying again I would try to say try not to fall into judgment try not to fall into um, complaining and moaning on Friday because it could be that sort of day I think a lot of people around you might be moaning and complaining for sure um, and I would try and say just try and stay out of that energy try to stay in a more positive um compassionate energy try to stay in more of a philosophical energy you know if, if that's where uh, more comfortable for you to sit in and go well yes okay this is an ideal but okay I, I can see the bigger picture on this one I can understand that and here's what we can do about it um, try to stay clear-headed level-headed on Friday because I, I feel like people might be pushing you to your limit um, definitely a, a day um, for arguments a day for bust-ups in the office be very very careful um, I want to say don't walk out on a job just because someone's pissed you off all right um, 
that may not be the best decision today. And you may really want to do that. You may really, really want to walk, but it could be a very, very bad idea. Um, so do act with caution. You know, the fox is very wily. He's not stupid. He knows what he's doing. He's clever. All of his moves are measured, even if they're fast. Um, take your grain with you again. It, it is a day for... for um, I want to say you could probably lean into your wisdom here as well. Um, think about things that have happened to you in the past, um, you know, past experiences that you've learned from and let that guide you today because it is going to be something of a challenging day on Friday. So let's see what else we have. We have the road is long and it's another, oh no, it's not another, it's a 29. So we've got 27, 29 get up and go do the thing <laughs> yes there's that impulsive energy coming in here again um yeah the road is long this is the thing it's a marathon not a sprint life is a marathon not a sprint just like youtube is a marathon not a sprint if you have a youtube channel um or in business that's very much a, a, a marathon not a sprint a, a, in most of the time <laughs> i would say um i'm sure there are industries where that's not true but um yeah you have to be able to last all right. Rome wasn't built in a day, but neither were you. Um, but I also want to say uh, it's not a race. It's not a race. OK, um, yes, you might want to get somewhere. You might want to do something. You might be very impatient to achieve a goal. But what about you burning out in the meantime? OK, the disruption today, the, the, the difficult influence, the unexpected um, influence, which could be considered misfortune, might be that you can't do the thing because you're burnt out. You're exhausted you fall ill, you hurt yourself, you injure yourself. The universe is trying to say, slow down, all right? This is a marathon. Stop trying to race off too fast. You'll burn yourself out. This isn't going to work. This isn't healthy for you, all right? So that's something to consider on Friday. Abundance is for everyone. <laughs> yes, it is. It's okay. You haven't got to rush out there and try and grab the pot of gold before the next person gets there, before your neighbour gets there. There is no need to hurry, is what I want to say here. And I think sometimes if we do try to hurry too much, the universe will slow us down. And I think that's what some people are going to be experiencing today. Not necessarily you. It might be that you see other people around you who are being forced to slow down somewhat. Um, and they do say that when we fail to rest, the universe will force us to rest. And as a healer, certainly in my practice, I have seen that a lot. I have seen people who came to me, um, you know, for, for Reiki healing, for, for chakra work, whatever it was. Um, and you can see that in their lives they, they've tried to do too much, burnt themselves out and the universe has said, right, OK, now you need a rest. And suddenly they, they you know, they're, they're very ill and they, they can't move, you know, um, which doesn't feel very nice. It's not a pleasant experience to have because, you know, this 3D realm is difficult to be in and, and the way things happen to us are not always pleasant, not always enjoyable. Um, but there is always something we can learn, even even in difficulty, even in struggle. Um, and that is important to remember. Um, you see this particularly with older people, like if they've been like um, extremely independent their whole lives and refused to ever let anyone do anything for them. They might find themselves suddenly in a home at the end of their lives with, with somebody literally looking after them like you'd have to look after a baby you know, like wearing nappies, um, <laughs> you know, diapers um, and having to feed them. And that can, on the grand scheme of things, that can actually represent a lesson in allowing other people to take care of you and learning what it is to be taken care of. Um, and that can be challenging too. How can you build on this with 44? And gratitude isn't about being small, it's about opening your arms wide. Gratitude card showing up again. Okay, I think we've had we've had all of these four so far this week. So there are some repeating themes coming out because I am shuffling the cards, I promise. <laughs> you know I'm shuffling them um, in between looking at them. So whatever happens today, even if there is some misfortune, some setbacks, I want to say, um, look at perhaps what that could be trying to tell you. What could the message be there if something's trying to hold you back? Um, sometimes, you know, we'll get in the car, the car will break down and then we'll find out that um, that the thing that we avoided doing would have harmed us. You know, maybe we were due to go on a flight and we couldn't because we were delayed and then, you know, something terrible happens heaven forbid. Um, but th this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Very often there is a reason when the universe does something, prevents us from going somewhere so that some greater misfortune does not befall us. So there is that to remember as well. To rem Yes, we are reminded to, to retain an attitude of gratitude, even when things don't seem to be going our way, because it could very well be that the universe has our best interests at heart and we just don't see it. 
okay because we, we can't see the bigger picture because we're human beings so And you're definitely not being punished because with this abundance card here is reminding us, no, no, you're not being punished. Um, you are as entitled to um, all the wonderful things, money, love, joy, happiness, as much as the next person. Um, it, it's absolutely not that somebody's being favorized, favoritized over you or favored. Sorry, over you. That's not my favorite. That's not a word. Favored over you. Um it may feel like it, it may look like it, it, may literally be like that on a human level, but as far as the universe is concerned, you're just as worthy as the next person. And I want you to remember that. So even if it's not your day today, it'll be your day another day. Every dog has his day. Why now? Number three. Self-sovereignty on 31. Uh, nothing will keep you apart on 58. <laughs> I like that. And stronger together. 17 okay so some interesting themes coming up in relationships um in romantic relationships and platonic relationships friendships here um yeah you may actually be questioning some elements of the relationship why now so why is this person doing that now why are they breaking up with me now why do they want together with me now um why do they want a commitment now um all sorts of questions potentially coming up there very very difficult maybe some somebody's blindsided you by asking for something or saying that they're going to do something again that that comes in with the disruption card which in a traditional tarot deck is the um the tower okay so we got tower energy uh, which is a very difficult foundation friday um so yes we may well be asking oh why me why is this happening now why does this person want this now it seems like completely the wrong moment but it may not be for them okay um stronger together so it may be that um yeah, there, there is a reminder that sometimes we have to put ourselves out for the other person in relationships or for somebody else. Sometimes we do need to pull together, even if it's not exactly the thing we wanted. Um, or it could be that your partner's having a really bad time at the moment, your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, wife, husband, you know, and that is making your life unexpectedly difficult. But try to see the bigger picture. Pixar. Pi I can't speak. The bigger picture. I said Pixar. So there could be a connection to Pixar here for some reason. Um I'm going to go with that because that's what came through me. Um, Self-sovereignty on 31. Yes, we are making our own decisions. We are, but we're going to, we're going to stay in the energy of the king of water. We're going to try and be empathetic, compassionate, but also responsible. Okay. The king of water is very wise, very loving, very responsible. All right. So that's the energy we are asked to remain in today, regardless of what's happening. I think for some people, there could be some problems in relationships, but I think we can get through them on Friday. It is a day where you can get through the difficulties. And I think in some ways, um, a loving relationship will actually help you get through the difficulties faster if you are in one. Um, and even if things are difficult, I just want to say that I feel like this person is in your life for a very good reason. They are here to help and support you, even if things aren't ideal at the moment. So there is that. But ultimately we are in charge of our own lives okay the other person isn't doing it to you you're doing it to yourself or maybe you're allowing them to behave in a certain manner or you're allowing them to make a decision that you don't agree with um are you standing up for yourself are you drawing boundaries are you being a full adult human being are you taking responsibility is my question that i want to ask you today in, in relationships are you taking responsibility for your life because if you're not, don't blame your partner. Okay, so let's take a look here at uh, money, business, abundance, wealth, <laughs> the markets. <laughs> See what's going on. Not financial advice. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at our money oracles and what we've got for Friday. Right then, three, three. I keep getting like bunches of three cards that want to come off the top. Um, <laughs> you deserve abundance. Yes, you do. That's interesting, actually, because that ties in very much with abundance is for everyone. You deserve abundance and abundance is for everyone. That's the same message. So clearly they need to hammer that home to somebody watching. Um, on Friday, I want to remind you, abundance is for everyone and you deserve it. You deserve abundance. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. OK. Double edged sword. Financial audit. OK. So there could be some things to look at in finances, some things to tidy up, um, maybe some accounts to consolidate or something. If you've got like 10 different pension accounts, maybe you're thinking about putting them all together or something. You know, that's something to look at, to see if that's advantageous for you. Get some proper advice on that, please. Um, Double-edged sword. Yes. Um, 
it is a difficult energy and it might feel in some ways like you can't do right for doing wrong on Friday. Seriously, in, in every aspect of life, all of these cards have been so challenging for Friday. It might feel like you can't do right for doing wrong on Friday. And in which case I would say do the compassionate thing because it's only money. You can always make more. It's only money. You can always make more. You can always get more. You can earn more. You can acquire more. OK, there is plenty of money. They never stop printing the damn stuff. <laughs> You know, so try not to worry um, if there is some unexpected expenditure, some uh, unexpected costs that come up. It will be OK. It's just money. You can always make more. OK, money doesn't really matter that much in the grander scheme of things. It's just an energy of exchange and abundances for everyone in whatever form it shows up in. So let's move on to Saturday. So let's take a look at the cards now for Saturday the 4th of February 2023. We have three. Rejoice in celebration. Oh, finally. OK. 23 Eagle Spirit. Spirit has your back. And the Nine of Water, which is also the Nine of Cups. Well, that's rather a nice combination of cards to see. And I have to say, after the week we've had, I think we jolly well deserve it. <laughs> that is rather nice. OK. Saturday's energy just feels like a sigh of relief, like, oh, phew, we made it. Things aren't so bad. OK, I can see things turning for the better now. It, it is a sigh of relief. It's a load, taking a load off, um, maybe needing to let your hair down as well, just to relax after quite a difficult period of five days. Um, we won't necessarily be completely through it. Not everyone's going to be completely out of the woods as yet. But I think we're going to see things a lot more clearly with the Eagle Spirit coming in here. I think we're going to have a much clearer view of the week's energy and the week's tendencies of what's happened so far. I think we'll come into focus more on Saturday. We're going to be getting that clarity back, which is very, very helpful and reassuring too. I think we can see that we are going in the right direction. We'll be able to see it again, maybe feel more positive, feel more jolly. So they could literally be a desire to let your hair down. There could be some functions, events, you know, it could be wedding, could just be, you know, going out for a drink with friends or celebrating at home, um, you know, dancing around the lounge with the cat like I do. Don't tell anyone. Um, Bedford loves it. But <laughs> certainly feeling more positive, feeling happier, feeling more positive about the future. It feels like we feel a bit, we feel back on track. And I really like that the eagle spirit comes in on 23.5, which is the Icarus mind. It's the higher mind. It's um, working with the higher aspects of intelligence, of, of our human intelligence, where we can see things from a higher standpoint, from a more enlightened standpoint. It is actually a, a positive number, 23, even if Icarus mind might make it sound negative. But it's where we fly high in the mind. Um, so I love that we have the eagle spirit, which is also symbolic of um, a vision and foresight. Also with the eagle, I want to bring in a connection to the United States and possibly to Germany for some people here as well. So what is truth and where does it lie? Yes, I think we're going to be really clear on what's going on, what's happening in our life. We'll get clarity on some things that have been holding us back, maybe worrying us. Everything's going to seem a lot clearer so we can feel more relaxed about things because we're no longer worrying about what the truth is because we know what it is. We'll be able to, to see it a lot more clearly. We'll have a much clearer view of what's happening, what's going on in our lives. Are you aiming too low? Passion requires follow through. Yes. Um, interesting. So I want to say um, it does feel like spirit want better for us. And they are saying, actually, you know, you can have even better than what you thought you could or, or, or what you were planning to do. And maybe that's because you do have the spiritual foresight now. You do have a better picture of what's going on, that clarity, those answers you've been waiting for. Um, you do know you can pick your direction now because sometimes we, we put off um, we put off making plans if we're not sure about a piece of information that we need to know or we feel we need to know before we can move forwards. Um, I feel that could be cleared up very much on Saturday. And we think, right, OK, I know what I'm doing now. Um, I can see that previously maybe I was aiming a bit too low. Maybe I can go higher. Maybe I can and have more than that. Maybe I can bring real transformation and, and joy and abundance into my life. Um, but there is this reminder here about burnout. I want to say with passion requires follow through. There is a reminder with burnout and 48 can be such an exhausted number. Um, it is completion of karmic contract. It's a karmic number. Um, we do have four and eight working together here, which can be very, very hard work. Four and eight can be very, very hard work when they're together. Um, 
I should know. I used to live at number 48 house. Very, very difficult place to live. Um, so I think with this card, I think we could be looking at the past and we could be looking at how hard we had to work and thinking, well, I don't want to work any harder than that to achieve things, which is why I set my sights a bit lower. But there is this reminder that it doesn't have to be difficult. Life doesn't have to be such a challenge. Life doesn't have to be such a drag. OK, particularly um, if we are armed with new knowledge, new wisdom, new skills, maybe... Um, Maybe you've recently uh, graduated, I want to say, with this card as well. Maybe you've achieved a new qualification, achieved a new level in your place of work. Um, if you haven't, maybe it's time to actually work towards that. OK, it doesn't always have to be more difficult. It doesn't always have to be more difficult. Body, soul alignment and take time to heal coming out again. Um, yes, if anything, spirit want your life to get more easy. They want it to get easier for you as you move forward. It's not more difficult. Yes, the spiritual lessons can get more challenging in certain ways, but it's because we've leveled up, because we can handle them. All right. Um, and I think for many of us, if we've had a very, very exhausting life to date, and that's certainly the case for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, some of my earlier years, or in particular, wow, I can't, still can't believe I got through them. Um, you know, if we had very, very difficult job situations, home situations where we're working to the bone, exhausting ourselves, struggling, maybe struggling with ill health, um, struggling with um, difficult relationships, difficult partners who maybe weren't very nice to us, maybe they were abusive, maybe we, we've suffered. Um, everyone's suffered to a point, haven't they? You know, what, whatever it is. But um, there's a real sense of exhaustion in the past, and that that's not what's on the table now. I want to reassure you that is not what spirit are offering you. OK, when they're showing you what you can have, they're not saying, oh, yes, but you'll have to work twice as hard as you did back then when you absolutely hated your life and, and wanted to die. <laughs> it's not like that. It will be easier. You will have the time to heal. You will have the time to heal yourself, to have the things that you truly want now, to look at those emotions, to really understand the gifts that you have, to really bring them out of yourself, to leverage those gifts, um, to leverage those abilities that you have. You can do this. Um, and to do that, to succeed in these ways, you do need to be aligned in alignment you do need to be healed you do need to be rested okay so it's not that um it's not that the universe is about to to heap a huge to-do list on your lap okay that's not what's going to happen and i think that's something that people can be fearful of when they work with the law of attraction they think yeah but the universe will then come turn up and give me this massive to-do list and all these things i have to work through <laughs> to reach my goal well not necessarily <laughs> Um, not necessarily at all, but we can be under that impression. We can be under that mistaken impression. Um, and also something we do need to be careful of, and I've caught myself doing this in the past, um, when we write what we believe to be a manifesting list, oh, here's a list of the things I want to manifest. And then I went back and looked at it a few weeks later or a few months later, and I realised I'd actually written myself a list of jobs to do. <laughs> I'd, I'd written myself a list of, of work, basically. And I was like, why am I trying to manifest hard work for myself? Why don't I, you know, and I realised I was aiming for the wrong thing. You've always got to aim for the end result, the thing that you actually want, the end result, not the way to get there. And for some reason, I was getting fixated on the way to get there. And I really should know better. <laughs> but we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. It's OK. OK, oops. And that's the thing with manifesting with the law of attraction. We get to choose the what, not the how. OK. And trust that the universe always has your best interests at heart if that's what you want. You know, it doesn't have to be hard work. You don't have to will hard work into existence. If you refuse to believe that you can't have something without hard work, then it will show up with a, a hard path for you. So choose to believe otherwise. All right. So let's take a look at romance, your love life, children and family. Take some time together. Feed your relationship. Yes, like all things, relationships need to be fed. They need to be nurtured. They need to be taken care of, just like children do. Um, I think it's a lovely day on Saturday to be spending time with family, and hopefully you will be able to do so, as it is a, fa a, a Saturday. I nearly said a, a family day. It does feel like a family day for those of you with kids. Um, really lovely to be spending time as a family, if that's your situation. Um, but also there is this reminder here to show love and kindness to yourself and to your partner as well, because for you to bring things to the relationship, for you to give to your partner, you have to give to yourself first as well. You have to nourish yourself too. So nourishing yourself and your relationship, both very strong themes this weekend. Oh, love of money, love and money. Okay. 
So money could be coming up as an important theme in your relationship or in your relationships at the moment. Um, maybe you were with someone who was a bit of a gold digger. Maybe you've been taken for a ride financially by somebody or maybe you are being taken for a ride by somebody. Maybe you're worried that somebody will take you for a ride. Um, you know, maybe you, you are somebody who's quite well off and, and you're concerned that, that maybe someone's interested in you for the wrong reasons. And I think that could be going around in your mind at the moment. That could really be giving you some some sleepless nights. It could be an underlying fear. Maybe it's causing you to have a fear of commitment as well. So, or maybe it's the other person that has a fear of commitment because they're worried about money. OK, either they have it and they don't want to share it <laughs> or um, maybe they're, they're worried that they won't have enough. So I want to say with rainbows and unicorns, unrealistic expectations, check your expectations, be practical, be realistic here. Um, not everyone's a gold digger. In fact, most people aren't. Most people don't want your money. They just want you. They want to have a relationship. OK, so look very carefully at your motivations in relationships here. Are you the one going after someone for their money? All right. That's not not a healthy thing to do. Um, are you emotionally disconnected from yourself or from your partner? Is there a distance there? Is there a gap there that needs to be addressed? Um, and again, this could relate to money, could relate to children as well, particularly if um, maybe if you don't live with your children, maybe if they live with an ex-partner, there could be a bit of a strained relationship that could come under the magnifying glass, I think, today. So there's a lot to think about, a lot to look at um, in the realm of family, relationships and romance. Um, I'm trying to get some clarity because there is a possibility for clarity today with that Eagle Spirit card that we do have the possibility to really get some clarity. So spend some time um, thinking, contemplating on these things. If you need answers, today's the day, I think, where you, you may actually find them coming through for you, which is nice. So let's take a look now at money on the theme of love and money. <laughs> Abundance requires gratitude, question mark. Does it? That's a question. I'm not asking for an answer. Does abundance require gratitude? OK, so with this card, I feel like um, I want to shift your beliefs. I want you to look at your beliefs surrounding money um, and what's actually holding you back, because we all have you know, unhelpful beliefs that hold us back from reaching the levels of abundance or happiness that we want. Um, check your beliefs about money today. OK, if you're thinking about spending money and instantly your inner critic jumps in with, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford that at the moment. Blah, 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 blah. You know, what, whatever it is that it's coming in with. Pay attention and see what that belief is that's holding you back, because there's unhelpful beliefs holding us back in finances, of course, um, that I think we can get some clarity on today. We can really get a new beginning there. So trappings of wealth. Yes. Are you afraid of money? Are you spending lots of money to look rich but keeping yourself poor? Um, gambling and losses. Oh, there are some very, very bad habits and um, thought patterns around money coming up today. Coming up to be looked at, though, and I think this is a good thing because I think we will actually be able to make some positive changes. Oh, don't forget where you came from. Yes, where you came from will tell you a lot about where you are right now and also your beliefs. You might not think that you still have the beliefs that you had when you were in that place you used to be or where you grew up, the, the, the society, the family, the, the um, um, economic um, situation you were in when you were growing up, the socioeconomic situation you found yourself in as a child, perhaps. You may not still be in that situation, but you may still be carrying some of those healthy beliefs that just are completely misaligned with who and where you are right now. Abundance Angels. And guilt edged empty inside. Oh, that's sad. Yes. So the abundance angels are here and I feel that they're stepping in very much to help, um, to help this situation. And for some reason, my guides just want me to mention that the, <laughs> the nail varnish that I have on is called Angel Wing. <laughs> and it's actually number 22. Like the colour is a number 22. <laughs> so abundance angels on 22. For some reason, they just wanted me to mention that. So there's a bit of fun trivia for you. But that could be relevant to somebody as well. There could be a connection there. Um, but the abundance angels, they are here to really give you that foresight, give you some clarity on your finances and where and what it is that you need to heal within yourself so that you can achieve not just what you want, but more than what you, what you thought was possible. Guilt edged empty inside. Yes. Again, I want to connect this card to the love of money, love and money card. Um, 
you know, are you living in a, a golden cage and very lonely and drafty in there? Um, have a look at your situation and whether it's actually making you happy and what you could actually do to change that, because the change will need to come from within. It will need to be a change of beliefs surrounding money and finances. So let's move on to Sunday now. So Sunday, the 5th of February, our cards, we have number two, Mental Conflict. We have number 10, Buffalo Spirit, the Abundant Universe will provide. And we have number two, Antelope Spirit, life is speeding up. Interestingly, because before I had a look at these cards, because I don't look at them in advance, I don't know what they're going to be. <laughs> um, I felt like I needed to pick up my little crystal gift. This is a Swarovski crystal, um, gifted to me on my 18th birthday um by by a family friend and um it's interesting that it's above the abundant universe will provide while my candles went out let's just replace that and as if by magic that's back again now on saturday we had the eagle spirit we were talking about clarity and really feeling like we're getting back on track um sunday might feel like we're taking a little bit of a step backwards again but that's okay because we've got these two twos here surrounding uh the, the ten to either side so um with the mental conflict and the speed over here um could be quite an emotional day i think because there is transformation on the horizon there is change on the horizon maybe it's actually a good change that's on the horizon for you on sunday maybe you've been made an offer somebody has offered you a a new job, a new relationship, a, a move, something that you actually want. But there's a sense of nervousness. There's a sense of not knowing if it's the right thing to do, if we're rushing headlong into an abyss, um, you know, if we're about to step off a cliff and, and everything is going to go wrong. So um, quite an emotional day, I would say, with the, these twos here in, in the sense of change, maybe feeling a little bit ungrounded. But I want to say that whatever's happening on Sunday, it is a gift. Um, I feel very strongly it is a gift, but it's a new phase of our lives potentially starting on Sunday. I feel for the soul groups watching this, um, this is a new phase. This is quite an important marker, the 5th of February 2023. So you might want to mark that in your diary, in your journal. Um, pay attention to the dreams that come up today because it does feel like an important day. It does feel like a shift. And I think that's where some of this fear is coming from. And that is, I think, one of the themes for this week anyway. We, we're aware that things are going to change. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Um, I would say communication could be a little bit strange today uh, when the mental conflict card shows up. You know, we can really be having arguments for no apparent reason, <laughs> but also the mind literally running away with us. It might feel like our um, the lower mind, ego mind, the inner critic running away with us, really making us feel quite bad and confused, maybe doubting ourselves, doubting our abilities. And I just want to bring a little bit of stability to say it's OK, take a breath um, and think before you speak on Sunday. Learn to rest, not to quit. Yes, that I mean, that could be one of the things that's concerning you. Like I was saying on Saturday, this energy seems the weekend's energy, um, the two days of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, feel quite quite connected. I mean, which isn't unusual, to be fair, because we tend to have both days away from work, don't we? Um, we refer to it as the weekend. Um, the whole weekend as a whole feels like we may be, you know, struggling with the future, thinking about the future and, and considering what our options are, considering what we're going to do moving forwards and it could be that we really do need to take a rest maybe that's the concern oh I'm gonna to have to work so hard to get to this new goal maybe you just need a rest maybe it's actually not as hard as you think it is maybe you just need a uh, I want to say a some brain space to actually see it for what it really is maybe you're you're just surrounded by a cacophony of voices maybe on social media maybe in the people around you the ones you work with you know your family maybe you need to get a little bit of alone time to meditate to get very quiet to get very clear on what's happening I love how the guardian angel influence is coming in as well um, on 27.9. I love that. Um, so your guardian angel is going to help you because it feels like quite a difficult day emotionally, mentally. Really, we could be running around in circles, a bit of a roller coaster day, even if it doesn't need to be. It's almost like we create the roller coaster for ourselves. I think that's the key. Um, however stressful it feels, it feels like we're kind of doing it to ourselves <laughs> on Sunday, which isn't something we like to hear but the good thing is we are in control of it if we're doing it to ourselves we're in control and we can stop stop hitting yourself in the face <laughs> yes stop hitting your head against the brick wall okay are you aiming too low again yes it's that continuing theme from saturday then saturday um 
looking at what we're actually going to do in the future, perhaps feeling exhausted, perhaps feeling knocked back. Maybe we shared a plan with somebody and they weren't as enthusiastic about it as we hoped they would be. Maybe we feel we've had the wind sucked out of our sails somewhat. Um, you know, maybe we feel like we've been punched in the stomach. Maybe you've literally been punched in the stomach. I hope not. Um, but there is kind of almost a wounded feeling, I want to say, on Sunday. There's a bit of a wounded feeling like, oh... I want things to be different, but I'm really scared. I don't know if this is the way I want to go. So just bear that in mind. And there is this loving angelic presence, which will be helping us to try and find answers, which will be really helping us to get clear. You are a divine being in human form and hashtag truth, because that is the truth. That is who you really are. And no is a complete sentence. So boundaries. Yes, if you need to take a break, you need to shut the door and tell everyone else to go away. You are allowed to do that. OK, because sometimes we do need quiet to build something new. We do need a little bit of alone time. We need some space. We have to go into the void. We have to start at zero. Uh, and numbers start at zero. Creation starts at zero. It starts with nothing. The void. Just thought, the mind, before something comes into um, comes into being at number one. So if you need some time out, take it. Because I think sometimes time out and just resting just being on your own is one of the most powerful things we can do so let's take a look at love and romance now i've quietly changed another candle <laughs> they're all going out they don't last long enough i need to get some of those like i don't know oversized tea lights that like really thick double the size so they last like eight hours or something that would be better for me they always promise they're gonna last four hours last about 45 minutes okay Self-care comes first. Now, isn't that a theme for this week? Wow. Particularly on Sunday. Take a bath, put some essential oils in there, put some herbs in there, make it into a ceremony if you need to. Take some salt in there. Um, cleanse. Let go. Share the load. Share with your guardian angel. Your guardian angel is there to help you, there to pick up some of the, the stress, there to support you. Offload onto them if you need to. Do you need someone to speak to? Do you need someone to talk to? Do you need a counsellor to talk to who understands what you've been through, what you're facing? Cat person, dog person. Um, again, it's on 23, which was the number of the Eagle Spirit card on Saturday. So there is this... Um, there is this tendency, I think, for the weekend for us to think about things from a higher standpoint. We have the ability to see things from a higher standpoint, to see ourselves and our lives, how the angels see us, um, to get that clearer vision. You know, it may be that we're communicating with our spirit guides who have a clearer vision of what's coming up for us. Um, even if the people around us really don't understand it. And that's where the boundaries come in. That's where they become important with cat person, dog person. So your partner, your husband, wife, girlfriend boyfriend crush may not understand where on earth you're coming from but they don't have to they don't have to understand it's your life okay if there's something you need to do you may need to do it anyway okay marriage and divorce okay so the theme of commitment or stepping away from a relationship may be coming up here as well so that is quite a difficult thing to to have to consider but that could be necessary for you to move on to the next phase of your life. So I'm just going to put that one out there. Uh, the theme of marriage or divorce. Um, yeah, maybe time to take a, a, a bigger step or consider taking a bigger step. And that can, I mean, with the, the mental conflict card and, and the, the antelope, all this emotion here, very emotional day, very difficult day, thinking about the steps you need to take to move forwards. I mean, it could be a happy step. It could be a, a frightening step. It could be a, a, a sad step, you know, Um Whatever it is, if you're not getting the support, um, if you're not with the right person, you may need to make some courageous choices there. So, and of course, you know, it's your life. It's your decision. I will never presume to tell you how to live your life or what you should or should not do. That always has to be your choice. OK, your decision. So let's take a look at money, finance and business now for Sunday. Right. And my cards, we have... Oh, give to receive, not to get, coming out again. Do we have that on Saturday or Friday? We definitely had that already this week. Trappings of wealth. Okay. Pounds, shillings and pence. That's old school. <laughs> Gifts of time and money. All right. Okay. 
interesting. <laughs> so it could be about doing charity work, actually, I don't know, um, helping out with a cause, maybe with a church of some kind. I can't get church in my mind. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily have to be a Christian church. There are other kinds. Um, church of Satan. Oh, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> There are spiritualist churches as well, which are a little bit different. Um, that's the kind I would go to, to be fair. Um, trappings of wealth, give to receive, not to get, pounds, shillings, or pence. There is a connection here with the past. I want to say there could be a mediumistic connection. It could be that you're actually drawn to go to a spiritualist church and listen to a medium today and watch a demonstration of mediumship or something like that. Um, or maybe you're connecting with your own mediumship. Maybe you're connecting with somebody from the past, um, a grandparent, a great-grandparent, or, or, um, or just some other person from a little bit further back when we had pounds, shillings and pence and that's pre-1970s I think in the UK. Um, so going back a, a little way now, going back, um, what is that, 50, 60 years at least into the past there. So there, there's a connection with the past financially going back 50, 60 years. Um, I want to say that could be something to do with finances, maybe Oh, maybe it's a very old account or something coming up that's actually um, maturing. I know endowment mortgages don't normally take that long to mature, so it's probably not that. But um, yeah, something connected to the past to do with money coming up today as a theme for sure could be connected to spirituality and mediumship there as well. Um, there is a reminder to give to charity. And I think you may actually feel like you want to do that, that you may actually want to... Uh, to gift your time or your money on Sunday. There is a bit of an altruistic feel. There is a sense of, well, if I don't know what to do with myself, maybe I'll just spend my energy helping somebody else and it will take my mind off things, which is nice. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not a bad thing to do. Certainly that might help you to get some perspective. Fool's gold. Okay. Trappings of wealth and fool's gold. So I want to say, don't be a money fool. Okay. Don't be a fool with your money. Remember that um, with money, you can always make more. And there's always somebody who would like to part you from it as well. So caution may be warranted here. There may be a con artist on the scene. There may be somebody sending you an email saying that uh, you have to send them all this money and then they're going to send you even more money. You know, look out for cons, look out for scams today on Sunday in particular, um, particularly the older folks. Or if you have an older relative who might fall for a scam today, make sure you're keeping an eye on them, you're helping them out. I think that's quite important. So some more cards want to come off the top here. I can see them sliding off on their own. Generosity of heart, mind and wallet. Yeah, I mean, these three cards up here, they are about giving and helping other people. Um, that does seem quite an important theme for Sunday. Gambling and losses, mastering money, mindfulness. Yeah, so money and finance comes up as quite a strong theme with all of these cards that wanted to come out. Very powerful theme for Sunday, so we may really be thinking about our money, we may be considering um, our investments, looking at what we're going to do with it, you know, maybe maybe there's somebody trying to take advantage of you right now, I'm really getting scams coming through, maybe there is somebody who's a gold digger trying to take advantage of you right now, or maybe you're afraid of that. I'm going to bring in some fool's gold here, pyrite, okay, um, just we've got the energy of the stone there, the crystal there as well, because pyrite is, is rather remarkable to look at, it forms in cubes, it's um, very, very interesting. Very interesting. I find it fascinating. Um, also useful for manifesting money. I mean, it, it's a great crystal. I do enjoy working with it. I really like its energy. Um, but fool's gold, yes, all is not as it appears today. So if somebody offers you an investment that seems a bit too good to be true, it might be. Um, also make sure that you're not spending too much. I want to say gambling. Are you losing money somewhere? Are you hemorrhaging money somewhere that you could not be? Um, do you need to check your beliefs about money again? So that theme's coming up there again. That's come up a couple of times this week. Um, yeah, definitely a, a week to be looking at your money and finances. Definitely a week to be paying attention to where all your money's going, looking at all of your accounts. Do I still need that account? Am I using that? Am I using this? Am I leveraging that correctly? You know, could I get some financial advice to do that better? Okay. So very, very interesting day. Money may be very much on your mind because it does connect, of course, with our future. You may have a job offer. You may be looking to move house, make some big changes. And of course, money is a huge part of that. So it may be worth actually meditating, um, doing some sort of money or abundance meditation, guided meditation um, to help you with that. Or um, sometimes I like to go onto YouTube and listen to the um, people put up tracks 
um, I can't, was it called Inner Lotus Music, I think is one of the channels I follow. They're really, really great and they have music that's at specific frequencies to help harmonise you with certain other things or to, to help bring you money or to help balance certain chakras. It's really, really wonderful. That's something that you could do as well. Or you, you could use um, sound healing. I'm very drawn to sound healing as well. You might be interested in um, singing bowls to help balance your chakras, to help balance um, your energy with regards to money, your vibration with regards to money. I also want to mention Abraham Hicks as well, um, if that's something that, that you're interested in listening to, that, that particular author. So let's move on to our spiritual guidance message for this week. OK, so spiritual guidance message for week commencing the 30th of January 2023. And I have left our little crystal gift, our Nikiniko and the pyrite crystal here so it does feel like an abundant week it does feel like there's going to be something coming through maybe from the spiritual message so we are all connected on 49 28 need and necessity 7 do not fear the unknown interesting okay so 7 is of course our number for this year 2023 is a number seven year, so that's a very strong theme this year. I feel there is a theme of wisdom um, coming in this week. No, you don't know what's coming necessarily. And, and this was a strong theme actually coming through on a lot of the days of the week. You don't know what's coming. There could be fear, but don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Um, stay in your wisdom, stay in your calm place um, and know that there is positive change coming at the moment. I would say as well, lean into your spiritual practice if that helps you at the moment. I'm very drawn to um, shamanism, but the shamanism of, of the land that you are from or the land that you live in, okay? We don't always have to reach out to other cultures. Most of us have our own, even if we've forgotten most of it, even if it wasn't taught to you, you can find it. Um, connect with the earth where you are, connect with the earth where you are from, I feel that there's a strong message to do that. Um, yes, wow. <laughs> so, need and necessity. Yeah, the changes that are happening at the moment in, in the world, they are necessary. I touched on this already this week, but we are seeing big change happening. And the yin and yang reminds us that that is necessary. Uh, we must have the balance of dark and shadow, dark and light, yin and yang, uh, black and white, night and day. Um, it's been out of balance for a long time now and it is coming back into balance. And one of the ways that we can manifest that balance in the world is by doing our own shadow healing work. So that is doing our own healing work on the darker aspects of us, of our trauma, our pain, our hurt, the things that we try to hide, forget, repress or forget about. Um, we do need to heal those aspects of us, maybe the aspects of us we're not so proud of, the things that we're ashamed of, our guilt, our fear, our anxiety. Um, bring it in, welcome it home um, and love it like the prodigal son. And that is, I feel, a very strong message coming through for this week. And I think when we work to do that, when we have the intention of doing that um, more and more and we do it more and more we will start to see more of the balance coming into the world we will start to see that not everything is black and white okay because it, it can very much appear that oh this is good and that's bad well not necessarily you you think that's good but this thing over here that you've said is bad actually that could be pretty good too as long as we do it from the right point of view with the right um intention and we make sure we don't do that you know it, as we do as long as we do it the right way so it is about moderation in all things, shades of grey, um, and remembering that we are all one. We are all one. How could we not be? How could we not be connected? So when we do harm to another, we harm the self. When we harm the self, we harm the other. Um, and when we heal the self, we also heal the other. And that is one of the crucial points that I think we forget or that we perhaps are not taught in our spirituality. When you heal yourself, you are helping to heal the collective. You are helping the collective to grow stronger, to be more healed, to feel better. OK, you are helping to improve the world by doing your own healing work. So there is a strong call there um, for any souls that are 
you know, feeling the, the need to do that, to do your healing work this week. That's incredibly important. And I don't think you have any concept or we have any concept at the human level, just how potent that is when we do that. Just the huge change, the huge shifts that we are bringing into being by doing that. And we will start to see it more and more as time goes on in the world around us. And I'm being reminded here that I do need to do a new, um, a new series of my podcasts. I do need, um, do need to do that. <laughs> there will be some new podcasts coming out on the spiritual support crew soon. I keep getting the nudge to do that. It seems very important. Um, but I do want to help heal the world. You know, I do do my own healing work. I, I've done a lot of painful shadow work the past few years. Um, and when we do that, we are actually doing our part. You don't have to do anything external to you whatsoever. Okay. And that's kind of freeing. That's reassuring. You know, you don't have to travel halfway around the world and you know, take out this despot and <laughs> work to rebuild this society and tell people what to do. No, just heal yourself. That's enough. That's enough. Cosmic alignment. Oh, I was wondering if we'd see that one. No is a complete sentence. Love is all around, but also upside down. <laughs> Love is all around you always. Passion requires follow through. Yes. It's the balance in all things, the passion and the follow through, are both required to move us into the age of Aquarius for us to see what we want, see what we need. Cosmic alignment, it does feel like there's something very interesting going on in the astrology this week. Now, I'm not an astrologer, as you guys know, because I'm always telling you, Ooh, I'm always saying it, I went up my sleeve. <laughs> and I wanted to bring out my astrology dice. These are quite new, I haven't had them very long. Um, they're really, really interesting to work with and see what tendencies we have this week what spiritual message there is for this week oops 11th house aries pluto okay so pluto and aries we have the god of the underworld um death birth and, and, and new beginnings um wow great power coming in with with pluto in aries and the 11th house so the 11th house um which is, of course, connected to the age of Aquarius. That That is the, the 11th sign as well. It is about community. Um, and Aries is about charging forwards and making changes, um, active changes. And, and Aries is about passion and fire as well. Um, but having that passion and fire to actually want to help other people. And I think the reminder here is that, yes, if we truly want to help um, help change the world in a positive way, we can do it. OK, we absolutely can do it as long as we... We remember, we remember that we are all supposed to be here. We remember to come at this from a position of love, um, that we are all connected, okay? We're not here to bash other people and say, you have to live your life this way because I said so. I think you should live in that pod and eat this uh, bug burger because I said so, because I think it's going to make the world better. No, that's ego. That is the ego mind. That is very much a lower aspect of self, okay? We're not here to preach to anybody. We're not here to tell people what to do. We are here to heal ourselves, to lead by example if necessary, and other people can choose to follow or not. All right. I want to bring ego completely out of the picture right now. I want to bring in the, the enthusiasm and fire of Aries without the ego, because Aries can be quite egotistical, because they're very, very strong-willed, strong-minded, and they can be quite selfish. And I think that is the lesson here. Yes, we can help to make the world a better place, we absolutely can do that, but we have no right whatsoever to force anybody else to do anything against their will. We have no right to tell anyone how to live their life. We must remember that we are all divine beings in human form. So I think in some way, shape or form, that lesson will be demonstrated, I think, perhaps on the world stage this week. There's something interesting happening here, maybe a revolt against authority and authority is a myth of course if you're not aware of the work of Lark and Rose I'll link below um no is a complete sentence boundaries boundaries yes I know that's spelled incorrectly I've explained before why there's a typo there and why I left it <laughs> um 24-6 master builder yes we must have boundaries in order to create the new world we must maintain our boundaries. We must not be lowly peasants. We must stand up in our sovereignty as the proud Aries energy encourages us to do. But we do it not just for ourselves. We do it for the community. We do it for everyone. We understand the the life and death cycles. 
of the universe. We understand that we are entering a new cycle. We understand that we are beings that come from love. We understand that we are all connected, that we are all one. We are all God. We are one with God. And I think with the, I think it could be an astrological alignment this week, something happening in the sky. There's something very potent going on, particularly for the soul groups drawn to watch this video. Maybe not for everyone, maybe just for us and maybe just for some sister soul groups as well. But there's something very powerful happening this week. Um, meditate, pray, send love, send healing. Because I think we can actually make a big shift for humanity this week. I think there's a big shift coming. There's something very big in the pipeline, but powerful, good, loving. But we must be very, very clear about we, what we will and will not accept. We must not allow ourselves to be manipulated. Um, ooh. <laughs> okay, powerful words, guys. Right. Rose quartz. Now... If I remember rightly, that is the crystal that I was guided to pick for this year. So work with rose quartz this week. Meditate on rose quartz. Take some time together. Yes. Spend time with loved ones. Maybe join and med um, meditate with other people, other people that you care about, that you resonate with. Um, do the healing work together. Send it together. It feels like you don't have to be alone. You don't have to do all of this on your own. OK, whatever it is going on in your life, you know, just at the human level, you don't have to do it on your own. You are not alone. Very strongly. <laughs> OK, they're being cheeky now. Work together for each other. Yes, this is how we change things. This is how we put that old karma to bed. 48, completion of karmic contract. This is how we put this to, to bed. We work together. We stop competing. We stop competing with each other and we start working together. It's not retain. Team Red versus Team Blue. It's Team Humanity. Okay. And I think when we see that, when we truly see that and put our ego to one side, that's where we can actually find progress. Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring in the Money Oracle here as well, see if there's anything my guides want to add. Abundance Angels. So there is a, a lot of abundance around us. Abundance Dance. Yes. <laughs> Okay, you don't have to dance if you don't want to. But again, it's 23, the Icarus mind. Um, that number has been coming out a lot for this week. We've had 24 a couple of times, 48, um, 7 and 13, 4 as well. So look out for that numerology this week. Pay attention. Yes, there is so much abundance, but it's a dance, not a competition. It's a dance, not a contest. We're dancing with someone, not against them. Okay. Um so much love and abundance this week. So much love from heaven reminding us, yes, we can do this. Um, yes, we can have all that we ever wanted and more. But we just must remember to always work together. Always um, put love first, I want to say. And I don't mean that in like a hippie way, like, oh, yeah, groove man. Oh, put love first. Um, <laughs> we can really misinterpret what that means. Sometimes we, we can really go off on on a um, self-destructive bent when we say put love first. Um, love should never be destroying yourself to look good, all right? Or thinking, oh, well, I have to be charitable to that person, so I'll go without this, although I really do actually need it. Oh, no, look what I've done. Now I'm ill. That's not helpful. That's stupid. That's pitiful, you know, and, and this is one of the bones I have to pick with certain world religions telling us that we should live in poverty and be happy about it. How does that help anyone? If I'm poor and I don't have enough to share, how do I help anyone? You know, oh, on a concrete level. OK, maybe I can send prayers if I've got the energy to do it, but uh, you, you, you can't heal somebody by making yourself sick. You don't enrich somebody by making yourself poor. That's not the point. And if that's um, the understanding you have of scripture, then I think you've been misled. OK, and I would challenge you to reconsider, reconsider that point, because there is so much abundance around us, so much abundance. Um, we are never in lack. Hmm. Very powerful messages coming through from guides. I think as well in your meditation and your spiritual practice, you're going to be getting some serious messages coming through because I feel like my guides just just gave us an ass whooping. <laughs> they uh, they were really quite serious then. Um, yeah, powerful stuff. Powerful stuff, people. Wow, phew. Okay, 
Well, thank you for joining me, everyone. I really, really appreciate you all. I, I do every single one of you that watches. Thank you so much for being here. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment. If you watch all the way to the end, if you can comment Pluto and Aries, so I know you watched right to the end, Pluto and Aries. Okay. Um, I'll see you again very soon. There will be more videos to come. I will be restarting the Spiritual Support Crew podcast for 2023. If there is something you would specifically like me to, to cover, to talk about, please let me know. I'm all ears. I'm here to serve at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm here to bring in the new era, just like you guys. You take very good care of yourselves. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.